I am more convinced than ever that if the average person just did the following, we would significantly improve everyone's health and probably solve a lot of the obesity issues. You ready for this? Build muscle, that's it. Just build some muscle. Researching some data, I just saw a post today by, uh, by somebody showing that our caloric intake has actually not increased since 1999, yet we are fatter, 30% fatter. So what does that tell us? It's probably our slower metabolism, probably due to less muscle. So, okay, yeah, I saw that our good friend Drew Canoli posted that. Yeah. And um, I shared that, even though you can take the credit for it. You did. Um, that, uh, did you look up and I fact did. check? Okay, so what did you find? It's, it's actually crazier. No. Yes. I'll really? read to you. Yes, bro. I brought up several studies. Now, here's the deal. We can't, these studies are not like super duper accurate, but we do see trends, okay? Why? It's not like they'd be self-reported. These are people that are actually going to the doctor and weighing and stuff like that. I'd imagine. Well, that part, yeah. But okay. I'm talking about like, how, how do we know we're eating more or less type of deal? Oh, okay. But we see trends. Well, I mean, you, wouldn't you factor in just like food consumption in the, all that, that surveys that kind of stuff right okay okay so um here's what they found that uh that intake of all ma macronutrients so fats proteins and carbs since the year 1900 okay so we're talking about a long time ago um has increased but has started to plateau or decrease in recent years that's one study another study showed the same thing that not only has it not really gone up there may be some indications that total energy intake has actually gone down a little bit, and yet obesity has grown. So the speculations are like, is it the microbiome because of antibiotics and this, that, and the other? Are there chemical influences, uh, maybe like xenoestrogens that can promote yeah, fat gain? Hormone disruptors. Yeah, and stuff like that. And, you know, those should definitely play a role. Um, however, I mean, you guys know as well as I do, you can change someone's hormones all you want. If they don't have the calories, they don't have the calories. So, right. and they're not basing this off body fat percentage, right? This is all just total weight, which, which, which really confirms even more than, uh, what we've been saying. What I think is happening is that, uh, and we know this from the data from strength tests. We yeah. see this in We're not getting stronger. I know that. I'm getting much. weaker. Yeah. An 18 year old today, average 18 year old today in college has the grip strength of like a 60 year old in 1984 or something like that. Right. Yeah. We're get we're losing muscle. We're losing muscle. So we're we're our metabolisms, our bodies are just we're not eating more necessarily. We're just not burning more. And it's not even an activity thing. When they look at activity, you know this as well as I do. Just trying to move to burn calories, your body adapts very quickly. And it also, even if they didn't account for that adaptation, it still doesn't account for the rise in obesity. It doesn't make sense. They're trying to make the numbers make sense. So our friend was pointing to. <clears throat> uh, you know, the food quality, xenoestrogens, he was kind of going that yes. direction. I, I think technology and the lack of labor and movement in general has a bigger factor than anything else. So do I, but it's That's not right. the calorie burn of the activity. That's why I say build muscle. No, 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 no. It's the, just a the physical labor. Of Everybody it. like, I mean, if, you, if it goes all the way back to the 1900s, I mean, uh, pretty much most everything that you had consumed or used, you had to do something physical. Yeah. To make it to lift heavy objects. Have you guys ever seen? <laughs> yeah, there's have no you, demand for that anymore. No. Have you guys ever seen videos of the typical high school PE class in yeah. the 1960s and 50s? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they look like they all look like gymnasts. They're specimens. Yeah. They're they're like climbing ropes and do, like they're, crazy. Like yeah. if you put the average sophomore in a PE class from the 1950s and 60s, uh, they die probably. Like it, we just don't have enough muscle, and it's not that we're not burning the calories off their activity. Activity's healthy. It's that we just don't have the metabolic rates. We don't have healthy metabolic systems. We're metabolically unhealthy. And that's uh, that's that's probably the biggest uh, factor. And, and there's a lot of factors, very complex. But we know this. When we train clients, we had them build muscle. The problem was much easier to solve versus let's get mm -hmm. you to eat less. Let's get you to just try and move as much as possible. Well, we prioritize all these careers that are very, very much like intellectually focused and brain focused. Uh, so all the pursuits in school, it's like everything is geared towards uh, building up your knowledge and uh, skill set in terms of like, you know, what you know 
Uh, but in terms of physicality and like anything incorporating more of your body, like we've eliminated all these programs. We've, we've cut them out like left and right. Uh, and any of these pro outside of school that we used to have available are less accessible. I mean, it's a trip when you think about it too, what we're seeing even in like blue collar jobs are starting to like AI come in and robots yeah. and like, it's wild to see how it's disrupting even that space. Like it's only a matter of time before you possibly could like not move <laughs> all week and work, get everything you need to get done, have groceries brought to your house, every everything you possibly need and literally not have any Here, sort of physical activity whatsoever. Here's a, here's like even more evidence, right? Uh, look at the obesity rate among kids, like adoles kids, adolescents and teens. Yeah. yeah. Now we grew up in That's the 90s. The most Listen, I grew up in the 90s. It's, we didn't eat healthy as kids in the 90s. We ate the same garbage. In fact, I think parents are even more aware now than they were back then. Like we ate a lot of everybody ate trash, garbage. But you couldn't get away with not being active in mm -hmm. the 90s. If you weren't active, you were not you know what socializing. Though, you know what though, Sal? Like there's also something to be said though about uh our genes and how they've been expressed because I think we, our generation was the first one that got bombarded with processed foods, right? When you say that, I'd say 80s and 90s really yeah, started getting that's bad. A, that's yeah. us, yeah, right? 80, 80s and, and 90s. Came, yeah. So we got bombarded with it. And now we're having kids that, and, and they're being introduced to that same thing. Like that has to change, of course, you, how, how your genes are expressed too. So it's like, but that's not even a though we, thing, right? we, and that's just how evolution works too. So I think that had we had we been generation three or four, uh, with the processed foods, we would have we would have actually suffered as much. I don't think that even with the activity that we we did in comparison, because obviously that's a factor too. I think that 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 the processed food part for for children. Now that we're talking about children, because I think yeah. we have different. Kind that's of a big factor, of course. But look, if you take the average twelve year old today, I don't. Okay, I have kids that are in school, and I you go watch kids play and run. When we were kids, every twelve year old, thirteen year old, fourteen year old could run fast. Everybody could yeah. run. Have you seen? Typical 13-year-old run now, it looks like a 40-something-year-old who hasn't ran in a while. They don't even have the biomechanics. Oftentimes, Justin can, can, can oh, yeah. attest to this. Well, I mean, they're having back problems already. You know, it's yeah, like, it's, it, it's crazy. Yeah, they're, they're getting that shrimp posture. Like, it's, um, and, and again, to so the environment, it's, it's the electronics, it's the sitting, it's like a lot of these things. I mean, it's already forming into their posture at a really young age. Yeah. It, I mean, there's videos you can see of like, look at this video of this high school in the nineties or the eighties, or look at the typical beach in the seventies. And you didn't see uh, a lot of obesity. You definitely didn't see obese kids. That was, that was, uh, well, we had like on the playground, there's like structures for them to climb and to express their body and to move and to challenge them. And, that, and a lot of that stuff's been, been taken out. Well, look, uh, um, how were we punished or generally speaking, how were kids in the nineties punished when they got sit grounded, room. sit in your room, yeah. go to your room, right? You know how kids are punished now <laughs> go exercise, get out of Get your outside, <laughs> go outside. <laughs> They've been awesome. Go figure it out. I'm so bored out awesome. here. Let me in. Totally. Yeah. And so my the, my the point that I'm making is that we the default was activity, right? Now the default is not activity. Now you have to schedule it and schedule play dates, and you got to go do this and go do that. And we'll watch you. Make yeah. sure you guys are okay. So uh, it's a it's we're under muscled, and our metabolic health is is not great. And so now obesity. Because look, uh, what we should see with a 30 percent increase in obesity from 99 till now is a, a, a correlating increase in, in energy intake. We should see a nice rise in energy intake that would make sense, but we don't. Yeah. If anything, mm -hmm. it's actually gone down a little bit, which is weird, and so, yet obesity's gone up. So do we course correct, or do you think that we come out with a drug that we're going to give kids? They're already doing that, bro. They're, I mean, that's... That's why I'm not... That's why they I'm want the easy answer, right? So yeah. they want to create and a drug. one hand, drug. it's lifestyle change. You guys know how hard that is to, to, to create that just in a client, let alone in a country or society versus here, take this, this, this drug, your insurance will cover it, take it once a week or whatever, every single day. And then that'll hopefully solve the problem. Do you know, I think that's the most dangerous uh, part of the argument, whether ob obesity is a, uh, a disease or not, or genetic. That's uh, the reason why they're doing it. I know. That's why yeah. it's the most, like people get caught, like everyone's on the surface arguing over it is or isn't, but what they, what they're not realizing is the reason why that's become an argument. Yeah. Why is that even, a, why is that, why is that even a discussion? Yeah. Who why cares? does it matter? Right. And, and why it matters is the most important thing is because if they get this to a point where they can label it as that, 
and they can then then they can prescribe it and insurance you've just can, you've just covered. exploded your users your, billions your of are, dollars yeah. are coming down the pipe yep. to to medicate children dependency at a young age you all know, you all cloaked for life okay all cloaked and wrapped as as trying to save them which is scary so scary for how many people are asleep at the wheel with this like not realizing what's really going on it's getting in this argument of like it is it isn't it's like that doesn't matter what matters is like why this has become an argument and what is to follow from that because a lot of you people are going to get fooled into thinking that oh i'm, I'm helping my child or this is what the doctor told Here me Today's YouTube giveaway is Maps Anabolic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, Maps Strong and Maps Powerlift, both half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Here's how wild it is. I was just noticing this the other day. I, I live in a neighborhood where you still see some kids outside here and there, teenage kids outside. And, and a lot of them are on bikes. You know how often or how rare it is to see them actually ride a bike that requires that you pedal? Now, do you- They all have electric bikes. Yeah, but do you feel, Sal- I'm like, what is going on? Okay, um, yeah. and Justin, you ever since gymnastics, you you tend to head back to the Midwest and other places more often. Wow. Do you think sometimes we're a little bit in this like Silicon Valley bubble too? That like, because I, I, I'll go places. Like one of my favorite places to go to is- mm. um, over in Eagle, Idaho, which is right outside of Boise, Idaho. It's one of my favorite, yeah. like, you know, towns I've ever seen in um, in the United States. And uh, especially the area, where the development I told you guys about. Um, but And one of the things I liked about it was as soon as I came into this, like, gated, beautiful gated community, there was, like, you know, kids, like, crossing the road yeah. as I'm driving. And it was just normal. Like, parents walking up and down the street. Neighbors were out. My sister, she lives deep in, uh, deep in the heart of Texas. And, uh, you know, she sends me videos every week and, uh, you know, they like, it's crazy. Like her whole neighborhood is like in her yard yeah. and their you know, grills are open and they got their like fold out chairs and the kids are, the, the whole neighborhood is full of people out and doing stuff. So yeah. do you think sometimes it's partly from our perception because we're in, we're probably in the belly of the beast when it comes to, you know, tech and you know, the, the AI California and all these tools. actually to, ranks pretty well with obesity uh, in the rest of the country. But yeah, but it's, nonetheless, it's, I'm sure. But the the data is is general and it's 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 nationwide. You're gonna have find pockets where it's better and worse. Of course, yeah. of course. I was gonna say. I mean, it's I've seen both, so it's it's hard to say. Uh, it's, but the Midwest too, you get all these other problems with like i mean mountain dew is like the prevalent drink you know it's like instead of water like they'll go drink mountain dew and it's like are you serious it's like it's but then again there'll be some neighborhoods where you'll see kids mm -hmm. uh active and and thriving so i don't know man i honestly it, for me it seems more abnormal to see that uh these days in traveling all kinds of different places so i always like pay attention i'm like wow this was intentional like this community is is uh very active and thriving mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. not normal yeah. yeah you know it's funny you bring that up i just thought i just saw something too that i just you know i never really thought about that's so interesting too that our our mm -hmm. medical system has even cho chose to get in contract and get in bed with companies like coca-cola i think you know that coca-cola has like a massive contract with like all the kaisers and all these businesses yeah. like and so they, they they have a huge footprint in those hospitals. Yeah. Like, like you in a hospital that are is providing care for people that are sick and unhealthy. The number one cause of death is obesity and all these and all the diseases related. Yeah, to Yeah, but that. have you seen the meals that they give people? I have a family member that went in for a heart attack, and then he came out. Luckily, they were able to to you know put a stint and save his life. And then the first meal he ate, he sent a picture of it, and it was white bread, jelly, glass of orange juice, black coffee. And I think a banana or something like that. And I looked at this it's, like, this is an insulin like bomb. 200 grams of sugar. <laughs> yeah, <I'm saying. laughs> That's for the hospital. That's what oh they gave them. I, it's crazy. It's so, it's so crazy to me that like of, of all the places, it's like, come on, you're, you're, you're supposed to be helping and making people healthier. And then like, you're really not. Yeah. You know? Well, I was, I mean, I've been thinking about this because um, there's sort of messaging coming from doctors out there. Like a Dr. Amon, I think was kind of proposing was really like blasting um, these contact sports and like especially football. Oh yeah, uh, you know, as being so incredibly detrimental and all these like you know super alarmist uh, type of studies and things. And it's like, okay, great. So what's the alternative? Like, Thank you. we're not going to like tell our kids to risk um, and to 
press, you know, to that degree where it's like, I'm challenging my body. Um, yes, there's impact and yes, there's, you know, ways that uh, technique wise, we can teach them how to do it without, you know, injuring themselves to the degree that they see. Not only that, most of these studies are like from NFL players that are retired. Yeah. You know, and they went through this like insane amount of volume of like, it, yeah. now, you know, the younger kids don't get that kind of impact. No. They're Sorry. Not, they're, and they're not studying velocity. these kids and that, like, I'm, it really pissed me off. Cause it's like, now what you're doing is you're spreading this like, uh, alarmist information to everybody to pull their kids out of these types of sports that are doing them so much good, so much benefit. Uh, you know, physically they're, they're active, they're, they're learning like but they how to interact hurt. with other kids. Hey, you know? Like. Yeah. Oh, but they could get hurt. Like you could get hurt, like walking to school. You can get hurt tripping on, over something. Like it's, it's bullshit, man. Like yeah. I, I honestly, like, I don't know how you guys feel about I, it. Like, like, really like, oh, I'm on no, board. Me. I'm on board. Look, there's, well, you have, you have two boys that are getting ready to go into that. So I get it. What do you think of the new, uh, NFL practice helmets? It's stupid. Have you seen them? Have you seen them? No. Oh, Doug, pull up, pull up NFL's new practice helmets. What? You're gonna die when you. Wait, is, they have helmets for practice. Bro, we we had game? these. Actually, this is funny. Yeah, I for these out. exact reasons to 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 reduce the 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 impact. They're like puffy. Oh, bro, they look funny. They have <laughs> giant bobbleheads. They're what? going ham with with the NFL now, like with all these new oh, yeah. rules and things to try oh, no, and no, soften no. the Do game. A picture with somebody wearing it, dude. Come Those on. right there. That's their practice helmet. Yeah, yeah. See them. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, it's I mean, a freaking goofball. They're trying to do everything <laughs> they can. I, I think because the, the the data that comes out, it's like it looks bad. Look, when you look, and you're what a great uh, example you gave, Justin. You have ten year olds running into each other. That's a very different type of collision than when you have a yeah two hundred fifty pound you know monster who can run you know as fast as a car hitting each other. You know, and it's very not different. like uh, and again, and this is why I've been on kind of a mission of like uh, taking new tropics and. You know, there's, there's ways to like bring back, like, uh, you, you know, you can have neurogenesis, like you can have ways in your diet where you can benefit your brain. And it's not like, you know, all this trauma is just going to delete like parts of your brain. Like this is such an alarmist way of looking you at it. You know, it's funny by the way, uh, uh, with this kind of stuff right here, Justin, you played both rugby and football. Yeah. Very different tackle, right? Very different technique. And is that because one wears a helmet and pads and the other one doesn't? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so it's funny, like putting well, more like, padding. That's exactly like comparing. I mean, that was part like of that was one of the so like one of the camps. Yes. Yeah. One of the camps wanted to do that was to go away from helmets because that would limit. Yeah, you're the, not going to yeah. bang heads. With I mean, somebody. it's like the argument. Like everybody thinks that UFC is far more brutal than like boxing. boxing. No, but boxing is way more dangerous yeah. and way worse for your brain. A lot more volume of yeah. headshots. Bare knuckle is actually the safest. It doesn't look the, that way when you watch. No, it, I mean you get all that's the what I mean. It yeah. looks it looks scarier to yeah. somebody but it's actually much safer and healthier than you know taking a constant you know being hit in the head with with boxing i remember i had a family friend who was a, a martial artist and he would also uh he fought in uh, shotokan karate they do these these full contact tournaments mm -hmm. and he, he would always talk about how they would do these hand conditioning like traditional karate they they really condition the hands and he goes you know how much it hurts when you actually punch someone in the head with nothing on your hands he goes Boxers hit like that because they wear big pillows on their hands. Yeah. Because you hit someone like that, your hand's gone. <laughs> your hands are, and yeah, if you didn't knock trash. them out, yeah, you're going to be out. Yeah. And I remember he made that point. So uh, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, good stuff. So yeah. uh, I got to make an announcement here, Adam, since you put out some misinformation. Oh, what did I, what did I say? You, your post, people actually. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing, there's no, misinfor no misinformation <laughs> there. Your face, uh, <laughs> visually accurate. No, we had a conversation on an earlier podcast <laughs> yeah. about, uh, I was talking about maybe wanting to remove my tattoo. And then you and I, you thought it was smaller. It's, it's, it's a lot bigger than you thought. So, so I sent a picture to our crew, All our right. editing crew, so they could post on the video. So, hey, look, this, my tattoo is actually as big as I, as I said it was. And so Adam reposted that on his Instagram, but you didn't point to anything other. You try to make it look like we're trying to compare back. Yeah, yeah. And then you put, or you had the guys put like a like a unicorn on my yeah. little back. I d I DM'd, I DM'd, uh, <laughs> or I mean, I messaged Dylan privately. And a I'm bunch like, of people thought it was real. I'm like, hey, throw a low back tattoo yeah. on Sal for me and then give me the picture back. I guess his Photoshop skills were too good. I, they, uh, they, I was actually, <laughs> I was actually blown away by how many people, of course, some people knew it was a joke, but I was actually more surprised by the, I mean, I, I had at least 150 to 200 DMs that thought it was. I can't. The last I actually had a, a yeah, yeah. A, a unicorn logo. And, and I think why it was was because I didn't say anything about it because I didn't, yeah, didn't point it out. I, I didn't point it out. Uh, I made it sound like we were comparing back sizes, which mine was way bigger. But I that was not. I wasn't. We even, I wasn't even flexing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a post from you from the forum. 
What a oh. great transition. I'm oh. like, how am I going to bring this up? Thanks, oh. thanks Adam. Oh, what'd you do? What'd you, you just get? set this up. Oh, yeah. So somebody posted on the forum regarding to that. It was kind of interesting. This was from- uh, Our back post? Yeah, no. Just, uh. just, you know, it's one of our forum members, you know, hardcore listener. Oh, okay. Someone we respect their uh, opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. says, I hadn't watched the video on YouTube up. in a while because I've been listening to Apple Podcasts, and but I actually had some time to watch it. I got to say, you know, Adam's- Arms are looking quite small next to Sal <laughs> these days. <laughs> so, you know. You just, they obviously wow. don't, bring that up. They don't know about the bathroom push-ups no. today. Yeah. <laughs> they still don't, they still don't know about this that. whole time. <laughs> <laughs> are you, you're like down to a, a new low, right? I, I hit a new low this morning. So I'm at, I, I was 209.4. So this is the lowest. When's um, the last time you weighed this? Um... Right after nationals, so even before I was pro, so right before I went, I hit I hit uh, Vegas stage right, which was the national show uh, where I went pro at two oh three on stage. So that's where I was at. And then when I once I got to pro, I was never lighter. Two twelve was my stage weight at pro. So two twelve to two. But that was uh, like three percent body fat. Yeah. And what, I, do you, what do you think you're sitting at now? I'm single digits now. You think you're at nine? Or lower, maybe lower. Really? I think wow. I'm. At, I think I'm at least nine. Wow. Um, I, I I'm looking to see if I can go get. I'm, I'm curious now more than anything yeah. else. Uh, yeah. I think I think I'm. I'm. You know, it what it will matter too. I try to explain this to Katrina too, because of course she's she is definitely not a fan. Of oh this, yeah, dude. You tell us. At least she waited until after sex this time. The last no time, way. Last time it was like mid sex. I'm just Wait, like that. What just happened after me. you were done with sex? Yeah, afterwards, right? She just has have, have <laughs> epic terrible. sex, and then afterwards she's sitting there, and, and then she's just like, hey, just. Just promise me I won't be bigger than you. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> that'll fucking never happen. Okay, it'll never happen. Okay, ever. And if it does, that means you got really big, and so we'll have a problem here for sure. I said, Why you say that? And I'm just like, she's like, well, you know, honey, I, you know, I like when you're this and you're thick and you're full. And I'm, I'm like, come on, you, you've so you're been downstairs and eat a bunch of food. No, no, thank God <laughs> I don't like, have. I all those, thank God I, I don't have any of that the body dysmorphia stuff. Was she holding you down with sex? Or what was going <laughs> no, on? no, no. <laughs> stop it, stop it. She's she's roughing you up. <laughs> There's a, uh, you know, part of the the trisepatide <laughs> that um, is different than like when I'm like when I when I when I would diet for like shows. I, I carb cycle a lot. And so there's always like this refueling process, yeah. which helps that like mentally it helps. Like it would always help me yeah, pump up and yeah. yeah. And, uh, and with this trisepatite, I, I haven't, I haven't had a, a calorie day over probably 2,500 calories. It's probably been my peak I've ever had. So I haven't even filled my body back up. And you know, this is me defending myself too, right? Last night to her, like, I'm wait, you like, said this to her? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like I had <laughs> to. Went I gotta break the science down to her. Like, listen, okay, I'm fucking jacked right now. If I want to be, okay, <laughs> like serious jacked. If I want to be, I'm like, you understand that if I go load up on 3,500 calories and go get a work a hard workout in, like, you're gonna be blown away about what your man uh, looks like right now. <laughs> She's just like, I know, I know, you know, I know you've been doing this forever, and you know what you're doing, and I know if you really want. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, then stop. Then, then what are you doing? Telling me this stuff. I don't need. To hear it you guys you. have such a secure relationship. That's so good. No, because yeah. all joking aside, you guys can say that stuff to each other. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. she's. I mean, it, part of it's tongue in cheek, right? She, yeah. know, she knows some that. relationship. You can't. I mean, you, you know, the person gets offended. Oh God, yeah. no. Yeah, no. Definitely. Uh, she's pretty good that way too, because I can harass her about stuff like that. But uh, who's little, less? Who's who? Who takes it better? Like, are you able to? Poke I take at her. It, I take it better. That's I can. A guy I, thing. I can give her a little bit. But yeah, but then you don't want to be. Yeah, then you gotta be okay. Like, yeah. I definitely could not mid sex be like, honey, you look a little fat right now. Oh, like, yeah, I couldn't say such shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, terrible. yeah. Or like, oh, your booty looks flat. I could oh, not. No. I couldn't say some shit to her like that in the middle of where she could do that to me. And I'm like, hey, you know, <laughs> not the best timing here, you know. But and take it like a like a champ, you know. But she's. Uh, but we both have that personality where we can we we yeah, definitely razz good. each other. Good for you, are you gonna are you gonna are you just gonna see what do you want what do you want to get to? Do you have so a I what I, less of that and more of a I. Health wise, I don't want to go too low, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm personally, I think. I'll tell you if you and, don't look healthy. Well, yeah, you look I, healthy right now, and I think I would hear that from you guys, right? I you think would. if you started telling me like, "Hey, bro, you're looking a little," you no, know, no, you look healthy. Face, if anything, you look healthier. I, that's how I feel, and yeah, that was you a get thing all told, skeletor. I would say something. Yeah, I, I told her just I said, to start. If he starts taking your lunch money, then we know. I, I told her I said, <laughs> man, I, I feel, I feel really, really down. good right now, health wise. I mean, and uh, I just think that I was in a, a constant state of inflammation. You know, a lot of people because we talk about in fact i started the episode with this like build muscle we're talking the average person okay but at the extremes it's not good to have like i'm, I'm a good 15 pounds too heavy uh muscle wise even though i'm lean i know i'd be healthier and have more mobility and all that stuff if i dropped some muscle not gonna do it but i know 
You know, this is why I didn't want to, because like, I, I, obviously I'm getting a ton of message about, I wish you would have done a body fat test before. And I'm like, why? Because that wasn't the idea. Why? So I could tell you guys that I lost 10 pounds of muscle and we can, yeah. we can all talk about how that wasn't ideal. I mean, I guess if that was, I said, I didn't care. I, I, at this point, I've been eating in a surplus and building to be a bigger version of what my body wanted to be for 20 years of my life. And, and I'm instead I'm allowing myself to just kind of dwindle down to what I think is probably healthier for mm -hmm. me to be at and just see how I feel. And not to mention, I know that with uh, this, the muscle memory that we have, it, if I really wanted to go yeah. right back up, but I, I, I what I'm, where I'm like uh, teetering when I'll get, cause I, she was asking this too. And I, and I might start to come off of it soon is I don't want to get, uh, below 205. And I think I'll feel like I'm starting to look unhealthy at that point. Yeah. I think if I were to go below 205, you'll know how it feels when you're working out. that too, yeah. you know, and that's, I'm not quite, <clears throat> so I'm not, um, like I, I feel good. I don't feel great. What's missing right now. So what feels good is, uh, my joints, my mobility, my inflammation, like that feels amazing. My gut, like that, all that stuff feels mm -hmm. really, my psoriasis, amazing. I don't feel good, uh, energy and strength quite yet. Not great. I should say I feel good. I don't feel great. You're in the refeed process. Yeah. I now you're averaging 25, but you were no, below. Not, I was like 23. I'm still not like- Okay, well, well, fine. But you yeah. were, for a while there, you were like a Oh yeah, I was like probably 1500. Yeah. yeah. And so, so that was, makes sense. So- so yeah, and and I but that's what I know is like as soon as I I come off and I refeed, give me two days of three thousand plus calories, yeah, feel great. and I bet I'm gonna feel, yeah, you'll um, feel great. Uh, amazing. And you'll so I'm, I'm kind of allowing myself to keep going. I'm not quite at that place where I'm like, okay, now I'm teetering on what I would consider like unhealthy lean. So and the, and so I'm gonna get dunked just so I can kind of keep. Are you gonna up. have him come here? Because I, I I would love to do that. Yeah, I'll, 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 I I just pulled up. You know, our friend doesn't own it. You don't anymore. want to do it, Justin. I saw your eyes roll there. <laughs> you don't want to dunk? You're not curious? It's been a long time. No, I will. We have to push him When down. was the last time you did your body fat test? I don't know, 10 years ago. <laughs> was it back when you did that thing? Yeah, was it, probably, yeah. That probably was the last when we time. did the uh, transformation When was the last thing. time you did it? Uh, I did. I do calipers, but I haven't done it in a while. Do you do calipers guess, at home or do you go to the gym? I'll have Jessica have test me, but I haven't done it in a long time. I haven't, And I haven't dunked in a long time. A long time. I'd guess you're around seven, six. Seven. I don't know. No, I don't think so. I, you know, it's funny. I look leaner than I am. I know you and I usually. are the opposite. I, you're I, leaner than you look. Yeah. And I'm always, I'm always like, I'll be like, I think I'm eight, and I'll test myself, and I'm ten or something like that. So who knows? You yeah. think? I think you're more because yeah, I, I think feel I'm slow. Single. That's when I like adjust. Yeah. When you're what? Yeah, it's it's more of a performance thing. Like if I feel obviously like you don't give a slow shit. or yeah. yeah, like it's weighing me down or I'm like breathing heavy or something. Yeah. No, and yeah. Doug, you're a big just circumference guy, right? You just yeah. do the mm -hmm. like a chick. You just do your waist. And like, <laughs> yeah. As long as my hips are fine, <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. I'm a size four. I'm not worried about my <laughs> hips. <laughs> just my waist. <laughs> yeah. So you've done. Have you ever dunked, Doug? Never have. No. Never. Oh really? You know what's funny about dunking? It. So you would like the best part about it. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. But is the um they keep track of it. I had a client. Remember, so it's in their records. You remember uh, 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 Jessica, I told you guys that I used to help her yeah. uh, with, and she went competing. And remember yeah, yeah, yeah. she didn't listen to me, hires whatever. Like that. She's she actually, she's getting back on her kick right now. And she's the heaviest she's ever been. And she's like, you know what? I, I need to go get my, my body. But she's been training for a little while. She went and got it. And she sent me all her stats. Now, the coolest part about this is she's the heaviest she's ever been, but she has the most lean body mass that she's ever had. Excellent. And I'm like, you know, that this, you know, that's what's so powerful about that. Like you, you she would have been in such a different mental space. Yeah, because you're just looking at weight. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it, it gave her so, she was like, oh my God, I have more muscle than I've ever had. You know, right underwater now. weighing, I don't have the best, uh, I, I, I hate it because what they do is they weigh you uh, outside of the water, then in the water, body fat or fat floats. So then they subtract the numbers, right? But you have to, you have to also expel all of the air out of your lungs. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that it doesn't make a huge difference. So yeah. I did yeah, it. I know. I used to. And I was just breathing out every right. little hour. Oh, and you're oh, underwater. Like almost throwing it up. And you're underwater. And it's that. like, oh, it's uncomfortable. I remember when I found that out, like, so the guy who used to own it, Aaron, um, or, and I are friends and, you know, my trainers, of course, when they all found out that they they went the wrong direction, right? Every, this is broken. It doesn't work. Like, oh my God, there was, I couldn't hold my, I was holding my breath. There's no way this is right. Like, yeah, yeah. and I, it, I had to go back and ask I'm him. Gassy. Some of my Let's trainers are pissed off. I'm like, 
I'm like, what is the room for air here? And what if somebody does? And he's like, Adam, he goes, even if you held your it's like breath. like 0.5%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, even if you held your breath, you're not moving this thing 0.3, 0.5. Yeah. He's like, so it's not like. Because I tried, I did like three times in a row. And I'm yeah. like, <laughs> That's why it makes it so accurate. I mean, it's, and I, like I said, I, what I really like is it's a, a, a non bi it's not a person with human air. It's literally. Yeah, it's just it's, wait. Yeah, it's going to be super accurate. It's going to yeah. be super consistent. They keep track of all the, of it so I can look back over the yeah. history of like. Yep. You know, and it's so uh, what's cool and, and I love to like educate clients on this. And I think this, the, the audience, we've talked a little bit about this. I, I have stuff from, as I think it goes all the way back to 190 something pounds to as high as 240. And I have body fat percentages in the single digit, single digit low to like as high as 19. And my body looking looking in different and all from that range. Yeah. Like so, I've been a an awesome two ten and a horrible two ten. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. an awesome two forty and a horrible. Like yeah, just yeah, goes yeah. to show, like man, you could be 30, 40 pounds different, but the body composition, like how much That's muscle, everything. how much muscle you have in relation totally. to the fat is everything. So we always get so hung up on the scale and people, especially yeah. you know, like girls trying to lose weight are always just like, it really doesn't mean a lot. I want to be this. Or it's like, it's like, you have no idea. Like I could keep your weight exactly the same and make you look like a way different, com a bikini model. Like way you can literally not. And, and I'm saying that like, I mean, my ex used to get on, like, she walked around at 175, 180 and she was a bikini model and you would never, but she just was dense. Bodybuilder. Yeah. Body yes. Builder, yeah, yeah. Crazy dense yeah, and yeah. a lot of leg muscles. Dude, so. I got to tell you, by the way, we're, we're, we're talking about feeling good, feeling bad, all that stuff. So I was talking to Drew, the happy drops from Organifi are crushing, crushing. Oh, people are loving them too. So I looked, I, I looked up more data on the active ingredient in the happy drops. Did you guys know they did a study where they compared it? In fact, I'm going to pull a study up because I don't want to misquote it. They compared it to Prozac. So, uh, one of the main ingredients in these happy drops uh, increases circulating levels of serotonin. serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. By the way, this is why a lot of people are noticing a uh, libido boost from it because dopamine will often give people a libido boost uh. as well. But in this particular study, this is there's an eight-week double-blind randomized trial of 40 adult depressed outpatients. And they were given the active ingredient. At the end of the trial... The uh, the active ingredient was as effective as Prozac. What? Yeah. Crazy. Now, I am not telling people to switch their SSRI. <laughs> of course, you're not. I'm not trying to do anything like that. But there are uh, they they analyzed 14 studies and they found that in each one of them it was effective to help with people with Alzheimer's. It was good for depression, wow. good for anxiety. Wow. Uh, other studies showing for libido. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's why they're selling out. Well, like yeah, crazy. I was going to say the, the, the real reason is because what he said, you know, potentially like women feel a huge libido increase. Yeah. But I mean, uh, it's crazy. He's, he told me it was a, it's a 20% increase in serotonin. That seems like a lot. It's yeah. Significant. Like that's, I mean, 20% is a, but it a, doesn't a, just work on serotonin and it works naturally. So it's not, uh, it's not a drug. You know. Yeah. It's not the same as a drug, but you see bumps in, on, on, on all the neurotransmitters, including norepinephrine and, ep, uh, and, uh, now it's, because it's natural like that cell, is it very similar to like how like natural testosterone boosters work? Whereas if you're low, you're really going to feel a major difference. If you're already somebody who has adequate amount or I'm high, sure. it's going to be minimal on how you feel. It. Probably. That's what I, I would think. I, I would I, I would say probably which is but, what, which would mean would make but sense. But antidepressants are like that too. And there's a lot of controversy around those as well. Um but the other com compounds in the happy drops uh help with energy, gut health, all other things that can also benefit, you know, um kind of your mood. Well, that's what I noticed cuz uh I mean came in here and I had like terrible sleep and then they, we had those around. I took a few of those and then it was like it just shifted. Yeah. You know, and I just had yeah, I was in a much better mood. Yeah. So and we you know what's funny is that Organifi this is the second product that they're on the leading edge because they started with their Shilajit gummies. Now I'm seeing all kinds of companies promoting Shilajit. Yeah, yeah. And now, uh, mark my words, you're going to see a lot of people promoting these saffron extract. Drew, Drew's the man. You know, I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be interesting if how much of this is, you know, I don't know if I shared this on a podcast last year when he like, you know, he kind of stepped away, like, and he yeah. kind of gave up his his role as a CEO, like, in, mm -hmm. in a lot, which I, I thought back then was brilliant, right? The guy's scaling this massive company, recognizes that, hey, I'm, I'm we're getting north of $50 million a year in revenue. I've never, this is outside of my wheelhouse. Let me go hire someone who's great. 
and 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 that's hard by the way like to do that like to to be to let give go away your baby yeah let go of your baby have somebody else raise it yeah. like that people think that's like oh yeah that's no big deal it's like that's no, a, it, no it's hard very very few people have the the wisdom to do that uh or foresight he did i thought that was great and then what probably happens many times is it gets away a little bit and isn't it performing or doing what you thought it would and then to see himself reinsert himself back in the company yep. and then see where things are going right now It'd be interesting i've never asked him like how much of that is uh because of him, like, is he the one who is behind, like, this is where we need to go next. This is what product. Needs He's to one of my favorite people in the supplement industry. Uh, when I talked to I Mike Matthews is another good, good guy, but when I talked to Drew, uh, here's what I like about Drew, incredible integrity. Um, and what I mean by that is health is the priority that he always puts above all others. So if there's a muscle building supplement, performance enhancing, this boosts brain power, this, whatever, if it's not healthy, then he's not going to promote it. He also has a very balanced view of how to put compounds together, what's going to be good, what's not going to be good, what's going to get people to use something, is this really valuable? Um, and it's it, very rare to find people in the industry like that. Uh, typically, they're driven by, here's the margins, this is what's going to profit, here's how we can make great ads for it, and we think this will sell quite a bit. And he doesn't, he goes from the integrity standpoint, and then he figures the rest out, which he's also brilliant at. So, yeah. 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 Love, love working with the guy. Hey, I got to tell you guys, by the way, did you guys see the... That wedding in Mexico? Did you see that what just happened in, in Mexico? This, this crazy wedding? No. No. What? A hundred people. So they were serving meals. It was a beautiful wedding in Mexico. I saw clips of this on X and I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Huge wedding. They're serving food and- They ran out of tequila. No. <laughs> yeah, that was that, it. That no. suck. 30 minutes later, a hundred people, severe illness, severe, where they had to hospitalize. The water? And it, it was, they, they think it might've been- something in the mushrooms or something like that. People were talking about there's a chemical smell, oh, wow. but like a hundred people, imagine, imagine just Everyone's throwing vomit, up your wedding. Sick. vomiting, oh, what a passing terrible, out. What a, what a terrible omen for your marriage. Oh, man. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if that was your wedding. You know what I mean? Yeah. Congratulating yeah, everybody. Yeah. Like, like they had to hospitalize people. I was watching videos of this and oh, it, it looked like a, yeah, it looked like people got poisoned. That reminds me, what movie was that where like somebody puked on the, the roller coaster ride, then everybody like started puking? And it was oh. like this like chain reaction. Oh, oh that would have been horrible. Didn't you get it. stuck on a on a roller coaster once? Upside I down? did. I did. Yeah. Upside down. Upside down. Yeah. This was at one of the Six Flags. It was in um, Chicago, and uh, so you were like, was it for 20s? an extended period of time too? Yes. Yes. Oh it, wow. Yeah. Um, I made the mistake too of that day. We thought it'd be a great idea to uh, bring in some vodka, <laughs> uh, you know, because it's, you know, we're, we're having a nice day. And no there way. was these lemon ices and I we poured some in there and like, I'm drinking it. And I think this was just, you know, this was just to teach me a lesson, you know, like, you know, like, <laughs> you know uh, don't do that. Um, and so I got stuck upside down. And we're sitting there, and it was probably like I want to say five minutes, and which five minutes that's felt like time. an hour. That's yeah, a long time. Hanging upside, upside down? down, upside down. My yeah. head was <laughs> purple. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, it was like red, and just uh, it took me a while to like uh, get back to normal. And I t I had like vertigo after that. I was like I was messed up. Did dude. you throw up? Yeah. Yeah, why you threw up? Down? And it, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. you were upside down. I was oh. upside down, and it was. I threw up, like not like a ton, but enough where it was like, oh, I just couldn't hold it back anymore. And then some other people were throwing up too. Oh, oh wow. yeah, oh yeah. That's, that's, that's a good that's time. Story. I never heard that story before. He told us. Oh, I don't I did remember tell that one time. But I don't remember, dude. Yeah. I I have. I don't recommend it. I have an embarrassing story that almost almost like happened to me. I have to share this with you guys because this was this was so comical. So last night I'm sitting on the couch with Katrina. And uh, um, I'm, I'm also I'm like multitasking, like working, watching the games. I'm like uh, texting back and forth and I'm getting ready to uh, meet up tomorrow. I'm going to have lunch with my uh, client, Christine, who you guys know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, hey, do you have and we're like, we're trying to figure out timing. And I'm like, yeah, that'll be good. And then she sends back to me. Thank you for making time. And I, I was typing, of course, and I was going to finish typing and, and I just I didn't I didn't finish because I think my son comes running down the stairs. And so I got distracted by him. And of course, I have, whenever I see him, I, I just like put my phone. So I yeah. just put my phone down or like that. And I'm like, and he comes running down naked to go and get in the hot tub. And he's looking for his bathing suit. And he's like all naked, run through the house. And he's like, I can't find my bathing suit. And I'm like, what are you doing naked or like that? And he's, <laughs> he's just like, I can't find my bathing suit. I'm like, well, go get it. Let's go get it. And then we'll go in the hot tub, right? So we go get the bathing suits, get in the hot tub. Like hour, two hours goes by later or like that. And I, and I pick up my phone and I go, oh, shoot, I didn't finish 
sending that message to Chris and I went to, and I go to send and the audio thing had picked up. Oh, I've been up. recording your <laughs> voice. Says, and so it, she says, thank you for making the time. And my response to her was, of, uh, of course, what are you doing naked? <laughs> that's what it said yes bro yes and i and what's even like i was literally not reading You're like sick. katrina look so here's what happened i was <laughs> sick i know i was just thinking, like but how am i explaining this to my wife like i and i'm like sitting there going like how did that happen and it didn't and thank god she was like there and i was telling her out loud i was like uh i almost sent this message to chris and she's like what and I'm like, yeah, I don't even know how that I sentence got put yeah. together. <laughs> but I, then I realized, like, oh, that was right when he ran down. I was right in the middle. I had said, of, of course. I didn't finish. I put the phone down. Oh, what a nightmare. I said something that's for Siri to pick up. Then said, oh, my God, what are you doing naked or what like that? And it picks that up. And I'm like, it formulated that sentence. send it to her. She sends back a naked <laughs> Oh, my oh, no. God. Not, <laughs> I was oh just kidding. So, <laughs> that's not what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was close. She's going to die when I tell her to, yeah. uh, tomorrow. Yeah. When yeah. I you know, her your phone's listening to you. It's changed the whole dynamic. It's listening to you all the time. Anyway. This happens It happens a lot when we're podcasting. I'll look down and I have this. Mm -hmm. It's been picking our conversation up and, and it's getting ready to send it to somebody. I but, forgot what it was the other day. We were talking. I was talking with, with my wife and then she goes on Instagram and it's literally an ad. This happens all the time. It's an ad for the exact thing that we were talking about. And it happens uh, all the time. My all favorite time. thing to do now, which pisses people off, I'll just walk through and be like, hey, Siri. Like right now, <laughs> everybody's phone's like dinging and going crazy and like all this stuff. It's like such a dick move. Ugh. It's that in the airdrop. You ever d got that when you're on a plane and somebody airdrops you like randomly stuff? Yes. <laughs> That's never happened to me, but you can- It's it, happened to me a couple times. Yeah. So you can just airdrop people and you they just can't just airdrop stop them, it? whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got some <laughs> weird pictures from some dude. And I was like, what the hell? Is this? <laughs> I don't like this. Yeah, yeah liar. No, that would be funny. Are you trying All to make right. up a story? Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be some crazy horror stories where that's happened. I mean, if that that, that just oh. happened to me yesterday, I'm like, there's somebody who's dude, had some bad Well, I've done You guys remember when we were like waiting uh, for a plane for a long time and then there well, was that connected. one story. Yeah, oh, that connected. I never was... told this on the podcast, though. We didn't? No. Yeah. No, we were waiting in like, um, so. It, it was a, a store had all these like uh, speakers, these Bluetooth it's like speakers. Like an Apple Bose store. Uh -huh. like that, yeah. And and I just realized there was music playing over the 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 the, the loudspeaker, and um, I was just like, you know, I'm gonna put my own music on here because I connected to it, <laughs> and then I put King Missile's uh, detachable penis. On yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> and 15. people were walking by like. Detachable penis. Yeah. Like, really a bunch of four, a bunch of four year old guys laughing yeah. at the airport. <laughs> <Strange> <laughs> decision. Everybody's <laughs> listening to the song. There's total <laughs> Beavis and Butthead yeah. yeah. right there. Total we were dying too. Yeah. That's the embarrassing part is how hard we were laughing. Yeah. yeah. The whole time. It was the most funniest thing it ever. A, it was the I best. I love the. I love doing I don't ever want to grow up. Speaking of speaking of growing up and stuff, they, uh, there was a, a study that came out uh, that I wanted to bring up because it highlights how we mis misunderstand studies or data, and it has to do with, I'm gonna find this, it has to do with women having children over the age of 40. So oh. there's, there's, there's studies that show that women who have children over the age of 40 are far more likely to live to the age of 90 uh, than women uh, who don't. So oh. I'm gonna ask you guys, what oh. could possibly account for? That's obvious. What is it? It's purpose. You have a you have a you're you're raising a, you're raising a kid at an older age and now you have this purpose to see them through and help. I didn't them even out. think of that one. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah, I, I totally would think so. More, more drive to live longer. Here's yes, a statistic: yeah. women who gave birth after forty are four times more likely to live to hundred. So I have a different theory. Uh, and oh, my what's th yours? My theory is this: is if you're a woman who's over forty and is healthy enough. To have a child, you're uh, probably predicting oh, you're doing oh, the right that's, things. That's, that's, I didn't yeah, think. That I didn't think of that. That's yeah. probably for sure. Like too. if you can yeah. have a kid and the kid's healthy, yeah, because that's already 40, very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. So you already have those disciplines established and everything. Well, I mean, just, that, your body's fertile. It's that, healthy. That's for sure. That's yeah. for sure a factor. I mean, I would think uh, mine too, but I think that's the bigger factor. Yeah. Because like, that it's difficult to for a lot of women. Yeah. Because people read that and they're like, oh, having a kid after forty is a great way to live to a hundred. Yeah. No, it's more like. There's the hack. Yeah, yeah, no, it's more like if you're healthy enough and fertile enough to just get pregnant at that age, you, you probably are going to live a long I do time. Think, I do think there's something to be said, though, about a, a mom at 40-something years old and 50 with still a young kid, and you're physically more active, you're you know living for them know, to help man. them raise kids them. Kids tend to take years off your life. <laughs> you think so? Little kids do. 
Ask a mom, you know, who's got, you know, I mean, I don't three year olds, four year olds. It's, it's a lot of I mean, work. It kind of forces sleep. you out of your comfort of yeah, seeing. It's and, both. You know. I mean, I, yeah, as I say, I think, I think, my, I mean, at least how I have approached raising Max, like, I, more of my health, mobility, cardiovascular. No, you're know. right, because you, you care more. Yeah, I care. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't right. care if I didn't have a kid to like try and keep yeah. up. Like, who gives a shit? It's but like the, I actually think about like, right. man, this kid at one point is going to want to race me and just want to do this. Like, I need to, <laughs> I need to be at least within a month or two of training, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> From that, I don't want to like be that dad who I can't do anything athletic I, I, with I my kid. I play this game with my with my so, three year old where I'll I'll have a head start on him and then I'll start running and I'll say you can't catch me and I'll run slow so he could catch me or pass me up and he's like I'm so fast but like you're so fast but we kept doing this you, over and over. You again. just got to do the Mike Myers move. Dude, Which one? Where you just like, uh, oh like the monster. You just yeah. walk really. Oh yeah, slow. we do that too. But I pretend like I'm running fast and I make noises oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But I've done this so long, so many times now that he's got like a big head and he's like i'm faster than you <laughs> he's nice cocky. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so i did one where i ran where i took off and then he cries or yes. <laughs> he got so upset that's you're being mean oh, that's not fair oh, you know did you oh, try oh. telling a different story last night did you tell it did you i haven't yet oh uh, yeah. i haven't yet. Yeah, okay yeah. you have to tell me if that no if that dude happens. in fact this yeah no it's like it's funny because it didn't occur to me but while we were talking i'm like i don't tell yeah. Adventure stories. All my stories <laughs> are conquering. Yeah, or like, like someone gets superpowers. Imagine then, if we told them like Pixar stories. We oh, would, like, we like would the sad ones. Them. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, and then your dad died, and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like immediately that happens in the beginning of the whole movie. Yeah. I, you know? I always try. Why do they do that? I always try and find, and I'm not the best at this at all, but I always try and wrap a lesson. So do I. Yeah, so it's like a so journey. It's like yeah. a journey, and he has to learn to share, or he has to learn to work with others, or he has to learn to fail and get back up again. Yeah. Like, so it's always like I'm trying to teach some sort of a lesson. While having this like fun adventurous uh, story, yeah. Jessica, sometimes it's really good. Jessica's stories have no point. They just go. <laughs> she just tells a story. Now he likes them because she's telling a story, but she's always like, and then I and then he got up and then Cordy he did doesn't this. like doing that. And then this yeah. happened. I, it, that's a, that it has to and be I'm a like, dad what's thing. The point? It has to be a dad. She thing wants to read it exactly how it says it in the book. It is yeah, a dad thing. It is a dad thing because I've, Katrina's the same way too, and I think she's amazing at so many things. But it's not her strength. It's definitely like storytelling and reading the book. Because so the other night. <laughs> She's like, I hadn't, like what we do is she typically, she's normally now, I used to do it a lot when he was little. She normally now reads to him 90% of the time, I'd say, because that's the time when I'm downstairs cleaning. But what we try and always do is flip flop that way. I mean, that way I get an opportunity to always still yeah. do it every week with him, but she's mostly doing it. And so like, it was my night to, to, to read with him. And she was like, Hey, daddy's going to read to you tonight. Which book do you want? And he's, he has that same fucking book, the, the Elmo book where I have to like do all the voices. <laughs> oh, and he's like, mommy, mommy, yeah. you could watch how daddy does it. And so <laughs> she, she made him come in and she, she she's trying to get out of doing that. So she gets her break for yeah. that night or to go do the other stuff. And, <laughs> yeah. and he's like, no, 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 you watch how daddy does it. And so it's so funny because he's sitting in the middle of the two of us and I'm reading That's it. So and he's like, every time I do, he's like cracking up and he's looking at her like, like, you, know, like, like right? learn to, you need to learn how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you take a note. Kitchen is all sour. It's not even that good. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing so loud? It's not that. <laughs> Daddy's not that funny. He's like, ah. I'm brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I'm brilliant. Yeah, so uh, it's pretty fun. I do think it's a dad thing. I think it's most it is. Dad. It is because because uh, then she'll get stuck too. He'll be like, Mama, <clears throat> tell me a story, and she'll be like, I don't have any. And I'm like, just make things up. Yeah. So I can't do that. It's like really easy. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make something up. I give myself the chills of my own story. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, I'll keep going on this one. This one's awesome. Yeah. So does that, okay. I, and I bet you have, because you are the guy who is already writing like the science. I've, I've, I've actually wanted to write a children's book because of that. I would love to do that. Yeah. I think it would be fun too. I would love to do yeah. that. You know who did that? Andy Versella did that. And he's got a really, we, uh, we've bought him before. He had, he had the bulldogs. Uh, yeah. So he told oh. children's stories through the story of his, uh, his bulldogs. And I really like them. That's They're cool. like like entrepreneurial. So it's like kind of cool like yeah. that. So I like. Oh, that's great. I did and do I, like a comic book, and um, Everett's really into it too. And so we've we've actually we've started a whole thing of like uh, drawing like really? parts of it. Yeah, and like writing. A I whole knew story you. I knew it. you would have some shit like I can't that. Help it. That's yeah. like where my brain's at always. That's I would. Awesome. I really want to do it. I actually think it would be a lot of fun to write a children's book. So mm. do I. Plus, I think it's that's at my level. I don't think I could write. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, a lot like, of pictures. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can, I can definitely entertain some kids. I wrote a pair of Throw a couple sentences. A whole book Still need someone to spell check it, but we are all right with no, the kids. No, I, li- I like it. And you can teach a lesson and make it fun and enter- you know, for kids. Like, you know, my, my daughter loves the caterpillar, the hungry caterpillar. You know, oh, yeah, he too, loves right? that. You, you, have loves that, you have a little that. app, you know, too, with that, right? Really? Yeah, yeah. There's a little app where you can you can move him and control him to go eat the app. Max loved that as Oh, a yeah. And there's a whole series. There's like other books with it. But yeah. she likes it because it's interactive. There's a whole. She can put her finger in every time. To crack up. He ate five apples. And she have you up. have you tried to introduce number blocks yet? No. You need to do that, dude. No. I, I swear by that right now. I cannot believe my son's math um, from that and how much he's just like taken to it. And it's like, and it just keeps, and the series goes on. So the more they're into it and stay with it, like the more it accelerates, like what he's doing, you know? So it went from just counting to. I got to look know. into that. Yeah. I got to look into that. It's a easy. I mean, there, there are toys, there's books, there's a series on Netflix that goes with it. So there's all kinds of things with that. I, since I've brought it up on the show, I've had tons of parents reach back out to me that have, that have done it and been like, oh my God, this, thank you so much. This has been great. So it's been, I've gotten great feedback. Yeah. All right. That's all. I'm gonna look into that. Yeah. Also, uh, wanted to bring this up. So NCI, one of our partners, they have, so they do a good job with this. So they have a guide specifically for trainers to teach them how to get 10 new clients. So it's very specific. You want to get 10 new clients? Get this guide. We'll teach you how to do it. And what I like, I like that it's that plan. specific. Yeah. It's yeah. not yeah. hacky either. It's not like, you know, cold DM traffic, stuff like that. So it's uh, actually valuable no, information. No, no, no. This yeah. is literally like, this is exactly the steps you can do to get 10 new clients. It's very achievable, very realistic. Is it cost money or is it free? No, it's free. Oh, it's free. It's on our link that we have. Straight, yeah. Is it the same URL, Doug? ncimindpump.com yeah oh, and nice. they get they get it all they get it all set up oh awesome yeah very uh, very cool shout out i have a shout out that i wanted to give uh today this was so one of our employees margaret who by the way she does a phenomenal uh job yeah, customer she's service awesome. constantly getting messages from people saying that she really helped them out doing a really good job so she i don't know how she's connected to this company um please forgive me margaret i totally forgot but it's a company that sells socks. Like socks? Oh, yeah. yeah, they sell socks. They sell some clothing, stuff like that. But the reason why she wants me to talk about them is that 50% of their revenue goes to um, helping uh, homeless youth. And they help them through uh, teaching them skills, getting them off drugs, like, give, you know, just really, like, like, really good constructive ways of helping them. So 50% of their profits go there. Speaking of that, what it is, I've never actually looked at the, the, the data on that. Is that, is that growing? Yeah. Is, are we having more yep. young people oh, that I are homeless? Imagine, yeah. yeah. The, but, but the, the site, by the way, is hippiefeet.com. That's where you get it. But yes, it's grown. It's grown quite a bit. I didn't know that. California's, um, our, I think we have, one third or something like that of all the homeless people in America. One yeah. third, something like that. Of it's like a crazy number. I don't know if so that's accurate. Something whatever like that. was it like four something billion? Uh, I think all us taxpayers paid for Gavin. No, to it was solve it was, in the, it was twenty billion. Twenty billion. Oh, sorry, twenty billion. Did you know that? And it's where it's at now. No, no, no. They spent billions of dollars on quote unquote solving the homeless I problem. Do remember, and then they audited it I and they didn't the, know where the money went. I, and I know the stat too. I heard the stat like you could have given so like angry. every single one of them like a freaking $50,000 a year paying job for like the next two oh, years. Something crazy like that. I it, saw it. it was it's crazy. absolutely crazy. Is that true? I want to know about that one, the, two things. I want to know, uh, Doug, like what wanna, percentage of homeless people in America are in California? Let's just Google. Yeah, it. I want to know it's, that stat, and then the, I want to know the young one too. I, I did not, I did not know that there was a lot of y- young homeless people. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and like by themselves. Yeah, teens. I think I don't think children, but I think teens. Because uh, if you see a kid that's homeless, they're going to get picked up right away, and yeah. you know, try. Yeah, twenty eight percent of the total population homeless there population. There you go, bro. In o- the United States. Over one fourth. Wow. Over one four, almost a third of, you said, nuts, of all the homeless people in America. You know, I mean, remember that when you're voting. There's kids. a little bit of there's a, a little bit of a bias there. Not not that I'm at all defending Gavin and how we run the state, but it's like if you were going to be homeless, it would be in California. Like the weather is like where you could live outside year round. That's probably the safest. Like you ain't you're not gonna Buffalo, New York. You're not fucking homeless no. in Buffalo, New York. No, you'll die because you'll die by winter. Yeah. So yeah. and there's places in the, the Midwest the same thing. I like would not, like to see. You know what would be a more a better number to look at? So if, be I'm, a, if, I'm, if I'm if I'm if I'm homeless if I'm homeless and I'm in Oklahoma, like I'm hitchhiking all the way to California to be homeless. Yeah. I'm sure that happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we probably get a lot of homeless people too from other places. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's a lot, man. That's crazy. There's parts of L.A. that are. Yeah. No matter what, that's well, that's crazy. That like it's a small city. Well, uh, L.A. Just in L.A. L.A. Right? and San Francisco yeah. probably yeah, account for like. Like ninety percent of that stat yeah. you just gave. Right? I forgot how many homeless people are in LA, but it's 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 like, uh, like bigger than cities. 
Yes, it's, it's yeah, it would yeah. actually be. I, I think, think the, it would be one of the largest cities in America. No, it's not that large. It, oh, the homeless people in California. Oh, it would be oh yeah. definitely oh, one of the largest. Oh, oh, people, yeah, yeah, all cities. of California. They meant just yeah. in L.A. No, in L.A. I can't remember what the number it's, was. It's high though. I've seen the number before, and it's like, oh my god, that's considered like a that's a, a good size. You know, city. here's why. Here's how you know why you know politicians are just a complete waste of uh, of space because they position this as a <laughs> they position this as a lack of houses. Yeah. Oh, these are homeless people because it's expensive <laughs> to live in a house. Yeah. That's not the problem. No. They're mentally ill drug addicts. Ninety percent of them. Yeah. yeah, you can't. You can give them a house, and all they'll do is. Well, don't is, get me started on that too. Remember that? I remember I shared that one documentary a few years back that I feel like everybody should watch because it was so enlightening. It was the one where, and I wish I remember the name of it, Doug. I know you watched it because I think I shared it with you. But the way the drug rehab oh, yeah. cycle works, yeah. holy shit, is that a hustle? Yeah, yeah. Just like too many incentives. It's to pay like people. I want to say Same it's either in the eighties or ninety percent are not successful. So the the success rate of those things are crazy low. Not only that, but the people that the 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 I forget like the the brokers who get the patients back into these things, they get paid such a high commission. Yeah, off of them. It's there's a huge this hustle. Yeah. There's this incentive to get them to fall back off the wagon and go back in. So you got these guys that are like. Send them to rehab. They make their big, huge cutback. They get out. Then they connect them with people to get them drugs again. So they get hooked again. And then they, right. then it's like, the, and they're just making here's, money off of Here's them. the article. Right. What's it? Are you looking for the name, Doug? Body Brokers. Yes. You yeah. have to watch this. Yeah. If you guys and by the it. way, the population in California is 11.7% of the United States. Oh, wow. So no. So we have a lot of homeless people, regardless yeah. of the size of the state. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. So here's, here's, this is the article I was referring to. Audit finds California spent... 24 billion on homelessness in five years, not like in a whole life, just wow. five years. And they could not, they didn't consistently track outcomes or what's going on. Yeah, they didn't even, there's no accountability. When you have that much money going and out. You're trying to tell me there's no corruption come on. that's going to foster from of that. Of course. Give a break, no. dude. A lot of people made a lot of money with that. And watch, a lot of people weren't helped. Watch that body brokers. Give me a break. Watch the body brokers. That'd 25 be, more billion. You could have built some serious hospitals that would help these people with their. Could have made a, yeah. Their drug big impact with that kind of money. Mm, anyway. Mm, whatever. Seed is the world's best probiotic. Look, you already know by now the benefits of probiotics. They've been shown in studies to improve gut health, digestion, skin, inflammation, in some cases, mental states. Well, Seed is the best. They have the leading researchers and scientists on their board. They make a probiotic that actually works, that really works. If you've tried probiotics, try Seed. It'll blow your mind. Go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump and get yourself 25% off your first month's order of Seeds Daily Symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Lee from Texas. What's up, Lee? What's going What's on? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going? Good, good. What you got for us, man? Oh, sorry. I... <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait yeah, on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> kind of a non-traditional question for y'all. So uh, I'm 38. I started uh, lifting when I uh, maybe... 10 years ago and uh, nothing with consistency till about the last year. And right now I'm on the, uh, end of phase one of map split, which has been, I don't know. I've been enjoying that one a lot. Uh, but I started ballroom dancing about 18 months ago. And then I got into musical theater sometime last year and lifting a human is a lot different than lifting weight. <laughs> yeah. <And> so <laughs> especially like on your shoulder. Uh, and so I was wondering if you had, I had, I had some thoughts about, um, conditioning for dance dance lifts uh, i looked up some like male cheerleader routines and i was wondering if you all had some <coughs> insight or thoughts on how to condition for uh dance lifts oh, this is a really interesting how, question yeah i haven't, I haven't thought about stuff like this <laughs> i actually trained um i actually trained um a ballroom dancer and i trained a couple competitive cheerleaders um where the the you know the base had to hold people up what, would you get like a sandbag or something yeah, for yeah. Training well most? so it depends so they my advice is going to depend on how often you're 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 practicing with a human because the, the best possible yeah. way to train for it's this human is to use the human to practice the lifts with yeah. a human in in a choreographed routine there's nothing's going to going to match that. So, um, how often are you doing that? How often are you training and practicing, you know, these, these, these movements? Uh, last year when I, when I was doing it more, I don't have any dances like that going on right now, but last year when I was doing it, um, it'd be at least once a week, uh, sometimes twice a week, but it wasn't daily and I wasn't able to arrange oh, it okay. any more often. Yeah. Okay. What part of the, um, the routine or, or lift do you find most difficult? Right, the takeoff, the stabilization up it, top, like the press. Typically it's the stabilization for someone who's new. But, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I think it's a stabilization then. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you can carries with yep. unstable mm -hmm. stuff. That's it. Overhead yeah. carries. Overhead carries Overhead while carries. walking forward, walking backward, walking laterally, you adding know, rotation. You know, but be basically holding a weight above your head with a with a strong, stable, stacked. Uh, position while also moving um, in different planes of motion. But the, the the regression from that would be just to hold something. You get really good at just holding something overhead for time and then add movement. That'll be your best. What do you guys think about uh, having, if you had access to like getting an earthquake bar and doing that? Yeah, yeah I was actually going to mention, they call it like chaos training. <coughs> um, and I know uh, Smitty and DeFranco have kind of put out some good content on this, but there's also ways you could put like say a uh, rubber band across um, if you set it up at, at a squat rack and you, and you do a push up on top of it. And just that instability training is what they're seeking after uh, is, is to be able to kind of get through the, the movement of it, but also challenge to the extreme <clears throat> sort of uh, the stabilization component and the earthquake bar Adam's talking about too. It's like our bamboo bar uh, gives you a little bit of that flex. So it has two rubber bands on the sides and you hang weights from it. And so just, just that little bit of movement, you have to be very slow and controlled, and it it helps for you to like adjust on the fly of all these little variables that come at you. So different type of training, but very specifically, I, I think it would apply well for oh, for humans because humans are the body weight, yeah, it just shifts on you. It's all yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you seen that before, Lee? Have you ever seen one of those bars? I <clears throat> never seen it. Never. Oh, uh, so <laughs> when we get off, uh, just Google bamboo or earthquake bar, and you'll and they're yeah. pretty cool. And yeah. I, I think you. I mean, so, right away, I think you'll see the. You know, so to add on to their carries too, like I wanted to add, there's um, if you you wrap a rubber band around a kettlebell, for instance, or or a dumbbell, and you do some carries that way as well. And so you're just holding and gripping the rubber band, so it's not too long. You wrap it up, so it's just a few inches. Um, but having that bit of um, bounce to it also too creates another variable that you need to stabilize. Yeah. So the the, the key is to to understand this, right? There's there's different kinds of strength that you can train, and they all they all there's a crossover. In other words, training one tends to contribute to another one, but it doesn't contribute fully to another one. It's it, there's some spe specificity there. But like if I was training like a grappler, we're looking at explosive throws. So you want to throw someone over your head, right? Um, for something like what you're doing, there's also an aesthetic to how you hold somebody directly above your head. You're not just holding someone up. up first of all, you're not just hoisting someone right. like a grappler. Right. Yeah. You're lifting them up, but there's an aesthetic component where you have to look a particular way. Controlled and poised. While right. you're doing yeah. it. And so the, the, that's why holding a weight above your head, practicing there, slowly progressing to where you're moving, and then watch yourself, record yourself. Because the aesthetic is also extremely important. How am I positioning myself and holding myself? Because it's not just shoulder stability. That's a big part of it. There's also elbow tension. And then, of course, moving down the kinetic chain, there's the stability in the scapula. And then the core yep. in the hips and how you move your lower body all the way down to your feet. Because if you look at like the top performers, um, I mean, I could overhead press more than most top dancers, but I could not yep. hold... A, you know, somebody over my head uh, as, with the same aesthetic, not even close, right? I could probably throw someone over my head, but I couldn't hold them and, in, in, you know, it, let alone move into different planes of motion or dance and have an aesthetic quality. So you, you're really going to want to focus on that, how so, you look and how you hold the weight and how it feels to you. And the more you practice it, the less fatigued you'll become. So there's going to be two different ways to do this. One of them, and this is the more infrequent way to do it, uh, or I should say, when you do this, do it infrequently, is to train more to fatigue. I'm really trying to get stronger. The other way is to practice it. So I'm training well, well below fatigue. So I'm going to take a weight that I can hold for, let's say, 60 seconds. That's my max. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to practice for 30 seconds. And I'm going to move for 30 seconds and perfect my technique, put the weight down, rest, until I feel fully rested and recovered, and then do another 30 seconds. Never going to fatigue, yeah. always just practicing the technique. That's the more frequent way you're going to do yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, especially because <laughs> it's performance-based. Totally. Uh, yeah. uh, more specifically, because I feel like we just threw all kinds of shit at Lee, and like he's probably going <laughs> to hang up this phone and be like, <laughs> yeah. like okay, where the fuck do just I start? Just go pick up people, if dude. We, that's if, my, <laughs> if we were, if we were to If we were to help him modify one of our programs, one, what would it be? 
and where would you guys insert some of the strategies that we just we just gave him? I, Is I, symmetry a good place? And then modify some of the movements in there or replace some of the movements there? Like, what what would you... I think the one that would contribute best would be performance. Yeah. But with performance, I would start all the workouts with uh, overhead holds uh, like I'm talking about. That's how I'd start the workouts. And then yeah. what I would do as I would take volume away from other overhead pressing uh, movements. You don't want to add volume. You want to you want to comp. You want to um, reduce volume in other areas so that you can add it to something yeah. more specific. more emphasis on the stability component. <laughs> right, and yeah. start the workout that way. Don't go through the workout and then finish that way. I would start the workout awesome. that way. Yeah, with like <laughs> you know 15 minutes of practice, like I said, at that 50 percent intensity. Then go go into maps performance, and I would cut volume away from all my presses. Uh, I mean, I would literally. So I would take your advice, what because that's easy, right? Just every workout yep. you start with that the, the, <coughs> your plan. Yeah. That's easy. <clears throat> then I would anywhere where there is a shoulder press in performance. I would I love the earthquake bar as a as a replacement of that. And you mm -hmm. and, and you just got to reduce the volume. You're, no, you're yeah. replacing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're replacing it. So wherever there's a shoulder press movement in maps performance insert earthquake bar or bamboo bar, whichever it's labeled as, and use that and mm -hmm. and put emphasis on the top and the stability portion, right? So like, let's say there's a movement in there where we have like a shoulder, standing shoulder press, uh, <clears throat> you know, in there. And, and traditionally someone just presses, come down. Press. <coughs> if I'm training you, I'm going to press, I'm going to stabilize with yeah. that bar at the top for a good five seconds or so, then come down. The cadence press. is way slower. Yeah. So even like a three count on the way up and then hold, yeah, five, six seconds Yeah, uh, to really emphasize that. And, well, and, and, and reduce your reps, right? So you're not going to do 15 reps where it might call for 15 reps. You're just going to do five for five second holds up there and then come down. Let, yeah. Let me back up for a second. I wouldn't slow down the positive because when you're performing, he's not lifting a dancer. Uh, slowly. The positive? Oh, who's talking about? I'm talking about stability. No, no. He, it, yeah, yeah. Justin I, I mentioned, mentioned the slow mentioned cadence on the way up. Oh, oh, oh. No, no. You, you, you can press explosively because that's the way you're pressing a dancer up. Uh, but and then and then the hold at the top. Now you yeah, can lower. You'll, you'll see how that works. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Like, good luck with the earthquake bar. Oh, well, it's explosive. Oh, that, okay. Now I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's the recoil on that's going to be. Oh, yeah. You're going to rip it right out of your hand. Yeah. It's. I guess. I guess my point, not like as a cadence of three, is like just gradually up until you get control. The beautiful part the earthquake war is it's going to force you to do that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that that is the challenge of the yeah. The, yeah the exercise but just to give you an example you know let's say there were nine uh total sets of overhead type movements it would be something like seven where you're holding and stabilizing and practicing that and then like two where you're actually doing full range of motion press so a lot of it is going to be in that stabilization uh, at the top because that's typically where um you're going to be performing uh and, and where the aesthetics matter the most um during your performance yeah, no, I'll uh, I'll look up that earthquake bar. It sounds new and different. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. So, yeah, uh, that sounds great. I'll check out that uh, that maps program, and oh. uh, I'll have to listen to this again. You threw a lot at me there. So yes, I'll we <laughs> yes we did. Yes, we did. That's Let's what send I was, I was trying to avoid that. So well, Doug will send this you. This what happens when we get a unique question. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's like it gets a, our brains <laughs> yeah. fired up. Too fun, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah. Doug will Doug will send you over maps performance. We got you on that. Uh, and then, oh, cool. Thank and, you. and then again, I, 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 just to keep it simple, I think Sal's of early advice about how to start the workout that's implementing that. And then just where the shoulder presses are, put their earthquake bar, that alone, yeah, those with two things, those are, two things then, alone will, will help. A and lot, when yeah. Adam's done writing maps, dance, we'll send that to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. This is a, nice. what a great pickup line though, to get to be able to lift up cute girls everywhere. In the yeah. Gym, yeah. You know, hey, can I practice? Yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I practice this move Let's on? Let's do you some reps together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that might be a little aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks, guys. All right, Lee. You have a good one, man. You too. Bye. Yeah, put that on your team. He, he had a he had a he had a compilation. <laughs> That's right not there. him. Is it not him, Doug? No, no it's uh, Dancing with the Stars. Uh, okay, yeah, I thought maybe yeah. it was him. I was like, oh, that'd be cool. Put that on his dating profile. I must be able to pick you up overhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's yeah not... I'd be picking people up just throwing. It's not them. often yeah. we get really unique, fun ones like that. That's yeah. a you know, it's such a see, it's such a different. This is what's I mean for me at least. I'm a, like this a fanatic, right? Strength is so interesting because you could be so strong in something that looks so similar, then try a different uh, way to exhibit that strength with a different skill, and it sucks. Like, 
I, you know, because I was a grappler, I mean, I could throw things. I could throw things overhead. I could pick people up and throw them. But to tell me to hold someone overhead and have that stabilization and look good like that is that's, that, a, that's the said, so different. That's the said principle. It's very specific. Yep. I mean, you could get yeah. a guy who's a strong man who could do four hundred pounds over his head, but then he'd be wobbly with yeah, a hundred and ten pound girl. Totally. Yeah. So it's like it's very very specific. Our next caller is Nathan from Georgia. Nathan, what's up, man? How can we help you? What's hey, how you guys doing? We're doing good, good man. Yeah, um, chilling. Well, thanks so much for taking my call. Um, I've actually found you guys just last week and an opening oh. came up to, to jump on with you guys. So brand new listener. Um, I've only been working out for a little over a year. Um, well, specifically lifting. Um, I've always been pretty active in my job. It keeps me uh, fairly in shape. Um, but got into lifting really to work on my discipline. Um, and of course, that's always a struggle. Just trying to keep everything on track. Uh, but then I found you guys through the Jason Kalipa podcast and he had mentioned something about the, uh, 75 hard program and that really just kind of clicked and felt like something I would, I would benefit from just from really the mental side. And I'm in day seven. So I started that day seven today. And my concern is what I've kind of set up for myself has me set up for overtraining, um, a couple of days ago, leg day, it was just brutal um, because of what I've set up. Uh, so where I've learned my workout uh, routine from is from the Michael Matthews book, uh, the bigger, leaner, stronger stuff. That's kind of where I got started. So he's doing a uh, kind of a body split setup. And so I'm looking at a five-day body split adding in a couple of yoga sessions, doing running, some rucking, as well as some, some hit runs. Um, but I'm just concerned, after listening to you guys, how much volume I'm doing. Really, I, I feel like by the end of it, if I'm just going to burn out or if it's just going to make me quit, just because the, the volume that I've added yeah. on I'm, my workouts. I'm glad, yeah, stuff. glad you found I mean, us, I'm, dude. Yeah, I'm glad we're catching you <clears> right now. So here's the deal. Uh, great decision to follow Mike's pro Mike is one of our good friends and Mike knows what he's doing. So his programming yeah. by itself is great. So I, I've, I've, so that would have been great doing 75 hard, not a fan of at all, especially doing it in okay. it, with everything. Now, the only thing that I, I like what you said for the 75 hard is the, is the mental side. And if that's all you cared about, right, because you're going to just throw out all the physiology, yeah. the, the science of building yeah. muscle, burning body fat, getting stronger goes out the window yeah. completely with a, with a programming like that. It's not designed for that. It's literally mm -hmm. a, a mental fortitude. Yeah. Can I suffer for 75 days and have the discipline to get up and keep doing it every day? And if that's all you give a shit about, yep. then I'm not against that either. But it is a horrible way yep. to train. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to push back a little bit. I, I agree with, with, sure. with half of what Adam's saying. It is a terrible program. 75 hard is not a good workout program. <laughs> Here's why I'm going to push back, yep. okay? When it comes to uh, training mental discipline, it depends on who I'm talking to. It would be a hard lesson in mental discipline to have me take time off the gym for other people it would be a, a training and mental discipline to get them to go to the gym so it really depends on the kind of person you are and why you're doing this do you have a tendency to yeah. overdo it are you running away from something do you beat yourself up often is exercise replacing another habit uh are you using it to distract yourself are you going through self-punishment do you have body image issues if you have a tendency to overdo it and beat yourself up and this is just what you do, you get obsessed and hurt yourself and go crazy uh, because you're running from something or whatever, then the discipline is not to keep going in that direction. The discipline is to train properly. So I need to ask you some yep. more questions. Like, okay. are you that kind sure, of person? Absolutely. Are you that kind of person or where you tend to overdo it? Uh, you have obsessive type personality. D could you see yourself abusing exercise? So for me... I find myself making excuses like, oh, I slept in too late or I stayed up too late. So, okay, well, I just can't, I guess I just can't go to the gym today um, to where I, I have made a habit of not keeping promises to myself. Beautiful. And that's what I'm trying to do. You gave, is, you, you gave me all and, the information I need already, Nathan. Okay, so yeah. here's how you build the, the skill of doing that. 
you don't build that skill by making promises that you're not going to be able to keep. So what you don't do is go from, I don't keep promises to myself to saying, I'm going to do 75 hard. You say, I'm going to start slow. I want to, I want to set myself up to succeed. You know, it's like if you had a kid and you want them to build confidence, you want to challenge them, but you don't want to push them so hard that they constantly fail because you actually do the opposite. You'll actually crush them. Uh, as an individual, you want them to have some wins, but you want them to be somewhat challenged. Small wins week over week. Yeah. Right? So, so 75 hard is, is not a great, uh, for a lot of people, Maybe, you know, it, it might be for some people, but that's not really a great way to build that discipline. It may just be doing something every day that's appropriate and doing it consistently mm-hmm. for long enough. What's the longest stretch of time that you've been consistent with appropriate exercise? How, how long has that been for you? Um, I mean, I've done a couple of months, five days a week, but then I'll come up with excuses. It'll drop down to four. Then something else will come up. I'll do three. Then I'll jump back up to four. Then it might go for a stretch. Okay. Um, so I, I like going into the gym five days a week, but sometimes that, I guess that just ends up being too much. I got a program for you. Um, I got, I got the right program for you, Nathan. I'm going to send you a program. It's called maps 15 and I want you to follow the barbell version on there. And you're literally going to go to the gym and it's, it's, it's most days. You're going to go to the gym most six, days, six days a week. It's six days a week, okay. but you're in there for about 25 minutes. You're doing two lifts and I okay. want you to, now here's, here's what's going to happen when you huh. follow this. Number one, you're going to get really strong. Okay. You're going to get really strong. Okay. You're going to build good muscle. You're not going to feel overtrained. You're going to feel fresh. You're going to feel good. And you're going to want to be consistent. You're going to want to be consistent because your body's mm-hmm. going to feel really good. And it's six days a week. Yeah. Okay. After you're done with that program, then we have other programs that you can jump into that require more time in the gym, a little bit more, whatever. But MAPS 15, I love that for you. I love that for you. I think it's perfect. And I'll, I'll, because I mean, I really like Andy Versella, right? I like him and I like his messaging and what, and and I know what his, I know what his desired outcome is, what he's trying to do for people. And I think in in this time and Mm -hmm. this day and age, I think a lot of people do need to toughen up a little bit, but there's a way to modify this and still accomplish, right? Like, so I would follow what exactly what Sal's doing. And then the things I really like in 75 hard is like the drinking, the water, the getting outside, the going up, like. So if there's yep. things like that, I'm totally okay with you like adding that into this this thing. It's like, hey, every day I'm gonna get my gallon of water. Every day I'm gonna go outside for 20 minutes and get sunlight, go for a walk, like stuff like that's okay. Mm-hmm. But what I don't want you to do is the the running and the the training volume that's in there. Follow the yeah. follow maps 15 the way Sal's saying. And then you can incorporate the other stuff. I like the getting outside and walking. I like the drinking the water. Like those things are really, those are going to benefit you. Those are going to help you recover. Those things are going to be a healthy thing to add into this. But uh, the the amount of exercise that's built into that for the average person that's trying to build consistency, uh, it's it really sets up a lot of people for failure. So I'm not a fan of, mm-hmm. of the the training. So follow the training that Sal's saying, and then you can incorporate okay. the, the other things that are more recuperative of, from 75 hard into the routine. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a way better gotcha. formula to build momentum. And that's really what we're trying yep. to do is get those wins and get you your body really um, to respond. And, you know, you'd have that kind of energy where you're excited to get into the next day. Uh, so it's like you're, you're ready to come back and then perform again. And it's not something that's, uh, yeah. grueling process doesn't need to be mm-hmm. this is this is the misconception yeah. with everybody out there uh, uh, training it doesn't need to be punished <coughs> uh so you know to try this try this uh this angle with it and you'll, you'll see how much it benefits your body there's a lot of content too Nathan. i mean i know you're just now really getting to to meet us and and listen to some of the things but we've talked uh, ad nauseum about the, the, a lot more in depth of the reasons why you don't do this and and understanding that uh when it comes to adaptation, right? You're, you're, you're trying to build muscle. That's I'm sure if we put 10 pounds of muscle on you, you'd be very happy. And so that's like what you're trying to do, trying to build. And it's not how much can your body body withstand is going to get you there faster. That's not how, that's not how it works. That's not how the physiology works. It's your goal is to, like Sal was saying, was just, you want to challenge yourself like a kid, just a little, a little bit more than what you were doing, but not so much more that you you end up getting so sore, your body's trying to recover. Well, you, you overcome your body's ability to adapt is what ends up and, happening. And then you don't build the muscle, and then you, and, but you get the mental and the, you get the mental fortitude of punishing yourself, but you don't get the results for the work you're putting in. Yeah. In fact, it's crazy that yeah. you, if you just barely stretch yourself a tiny bit week over week, 
you will see more muscle, more gains, mm-hmm. more strength. And you'll build that mental fortitude in a much more consistent, applicable It'll way. It'll stick, too. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's the thing. Okay. But keep going, okay. keep going awesome. down, keep going down the um, rabbit hole of our content too. By the way, we have sure. we have an AI tool called uh, AskMindPump.com. So if you have like random okay. questions, you go to AskMindPump.com. Gotcha. Yeah. Our AI will answer, Teach and it'll also episode. it'll also give you episodes where we go in depth with whatever that question is. Yeah, I've been listening to I don't even know how many podcasts from you guys now. It's been like drinking out of a fire hose with you. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Out. Got some catching up awesome. to do. Yeah. Good, good, man. I'm yeah, glad, I appreciate I'm, that. I'm glad you found us. Yeah. Um, and I do, I do enjoy running as well. So how would you incorporate that? I mean, I'm not like some crazy long distance runner, but like 5k or a 10k yeah, you, type deal. How would you incorporate something like well, that into, into what, the um, maps you've seen? What's reasonable for you uh, that you know you can maintain forever? Right. Like what's a reasonable amount of running for you? Cause I don't know what that is, right? That you think like, yeah, I can keep that up sure. for the rest or of my life. Or you like doing that. Yeah. Right? What does that look like? Yeah. Probably like two, three days a week. Okay. Go one day a week. Is that, yeah, one day. Okay. Yeah, one day a week. Just do that with Maps fifteen. Follow that all the way through. When you're done with Maps fifteen, then if you feel like you want to add another day, do it. But go one day a week plus Maps fifteen, okay. and I think you're gonna yeah. you're gonna do great. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Nathan, I'm going to give you one more thing too, since I know you're trying yeah. to work on the mental discipline and all that stuff like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold like what's mm-hmm. the, what's the date today, Doug? It is April 17th. 17th. All right. I want to hear back from you in 60 days. Yeah, we'll have you back on the show. 60 days. Okay. 60 days of reporting back to us on what what you've been. You know what? Fuck that. 30 days. I don't even want to wait 60. Give me 30 days. 30 30 days from now. (coughs) Following what what we're telling you right now. And I just want to hear how you're doing and how you're feeling. And we're we're going to hold you accountable. Okay. All right. Deal. All right, Nathan. All right. Deal. Thanks for calling in, man. All right. Thank you, guys. See you in a month, brother. All right. Yeah, good question. Well, you make sure you put that note on there so Jerry knows to yeah. Yeah, look that's for it. That was a really good question. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the whole, the idea around building mental toughness, I think sometimes is is a is a way that we ourselves or other people use to mask mm-hmm. or to cover up or to excuse the poor programming or the fact that it's inappropriate. It's like, oh, yeah, I got to push through this even though it's destroying my body, like this is good for my mental toughness. Um, maybe, maybe not, you know, uh, life's going to challenge you anyway. Yeah. And what you want to do is, is, is go through the process, go ahead and challenge yourself, but do it in a way to where you're not making yourself, you're not saying the other side the is beneficial. That's right. right? Like I don't want to end up on the other side, like, like half dead. I, yeah. I've had a really hard time reconciling my, my feelings around this because I, I came out early on <coughs> uh, on the show when 75 Hard first came out and really hammered the fuck out of yeah. it. Like it, it was so the opposite of our messaging. Yeah. Now uh, now I have this whole different feeling about it because I've, I've grown to love Andy Versella. Like I love his message. I love his content. I love yeah. the stuff he's putting out. I've got to know him. You know why he's putting it out. Right. Yeah, that's and, the and so I understand what he's trying to do. He's like, And he's, he's very convicted about... We have a lot of weak fucking men out there that, and 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 I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. There's a lot of weak young men that don't have good strong men in their life that are teaching them to have mental fortitude and discipline yeah. and do hard things. <clears throat> and there's such value. I get it. So I so there so that's why I'm so conflicted. But then if I get a client who's coming to me and they want the best path in order to get fit and in shape and build this as a lifelong pursuit. It's not the way I would well, do it. It's just it, not. To me, it's just, it's one half of the discipline. You know, the other half is to be able to control that into the appropriate dose. Yeah. And so, yes, it's doing hard things, 100%, but also it's what's going to benefit you the most. That's that's a whole nother discipline that you, you know, have to learn. The other thing, too, is that you know, it reminds me of, there's a movie called The Bronx Tale. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. I love that movie. It's really good, right? And the, the little kid, Colodro, right? His dad is Robert De Niro, plays the, his father. And the little kid idolizes these professional baseball players. And his dad's like, I don't remember what he was doing. He's talking about this, like this professional baseball, his dad's a bus driver and how, how good they are and whatever. And they're like, those, he goes, your dad shows up every morning, goes to work, wakes up early, works for hours, comes home. He goes, that's, that's toughness. The reason why I'm saying that is, okay, 75 hard, 75 days of testing yourself. You know, men are having challenges, not because they can't do that. They're having challenges because they can't show up as good fathers. They can't show up as good husbands, as good sons, as good leaders every day for years and years and years, not 75 days. So 
the, I get why these, these are popular, but I, you know, speaking to young men right now, like that's not what being tough is. And I'm speaking from personal experience as a 45 year old man. It took me a long time to learn this. It's showing up every single day, doing the little things for years and years and years. And that's what we need more of. Not guys that could go crazy for 75 days and then go, you know, do whatever. That's not the same thing. Yeah. Our next caller is Heather from Wisconsin. Hi, Heather. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You got it. Of course. Thanks for calling in. Awesome. Hopefully, I'm not too echoey. I'm actually in my garage gym. No, you're good. <laughs> not too bad. Love uh, it. I uh, I found you guys about six months ago, and I was so excited to find you guys because everything that you guys say is 100% what I've always believed in. And I never knew a lot of that information was was out there that I could grasp and understand. So thanks for thanks for having me. I'm so appreciative. You got awesome. it. That's great. What can we do for you, Heather? Awesome. Um, so I recently lost 35 pounds, and I, you know, normally I work out about three days a week. I've been following your guys's programs, and I absolutely love them. So my question is, how do I work on? Um, body parts that are lagging behind, like especially my glutes. Now that I've lost the weight, it seems a little bit more on the saggy side. So just wondering how I can incorporate different moves into your guys' programs because I love the programs, but like any woman, we always want to add more for the legs and glutes. And You're, you're going to love, Heather. We just, literally yesterday, we, just, re we just recorded a whole episode on, uh, what was the title, Doug? Why, yeah, why your butt won't grow. Why your butt won't grow. So we have an episode coming in the next week or two. Actually, it's 2322. It will be live when this airs. Oh, nice. Yeah. So right. when your episode goes live, it will be live. So it hasn't came out yet. It's 2322, Doug said, is when, when it'll come out. That's the name. Uh, of, that's the number of the episode. So that so that'll be a good one for you to listen to, just because we go into great detail all about that with everything from nutrition and all the things and exercise, best exercises. But we have a program, Maps Aesthetic, that is designed yep. to help with lagging body parts. And so it's it, that's exactly what it is. So you would pick, say, glutes and hamstrings uh, as your two muscles yep. that you want to focus on, and then you would implement those movements uh, into the program. And so have you seen or do you have MAPS Aesthetic yet? I do have MAPS Aesthetic. Um, that was I was going to run that next. I'm in the middle. Well, I'm at the end of a cut right now, so I was going to run performance um, and then go into aesthetic. But my, I guess what I want to know is, how I can incorporate different moves into like, say, symmetry or anabolic to, you know, because I want to run the different programs. I don't want to necessarily run the same program over right. and over again. But how can I add more moves into the programs that you guys already have that I already have? And, you know, because you guys always talk about, you know, farmer carries and all these different different things that would help with those movements. But there's really no like hip thrust or actual glute glute movements um but the squats and the deadlifts i know are, are doing a great job for me right now yeah it, you know just the, the the short answer um is you would start regardless of what program of ours you're following you could start all of the foundational workouts with a glute focused exercise okay so d doesn't matter what math program when you start your workout start it with a maybe three sets of a glute focused exercise then what you do is you take that those sets and you re, you remove them from other exercises in the workout because you don't want to add volume, you still want to hit the same right. amount of volume. So you take it away from the body parts that you feel confident with. So like okay, I'll take away some away from my shoulders. I'll take some away from these oh, other sure. lower body exercises or whatever. So you would just start your workouts with like hip thrusts or well, you know you know uh, kickbacks or something that's that's glute focused well we'll keep it even simpler what, and i'll give you the the answer to what the episode gets <coughs> into we pick three movements and we tell you to do that three times a week so literally if we follow math performance all you're going to do is start the workout okay day one squat uh, barbell squats day two or the second uh foundational day <coughs> is hip thrust mm -hmm. day three is deadlifts and let that be the first exercise you do on every foundational day and when and then you take uh, the day that you do those squats, you replace whatever, you know, uh, leg exercise that we have in there, which is, I don't know what it is. It might be day. squats or it might be something else, yeah. but you, you, you just, you just reduce the volume from you just replace else. it. You replace it and you start every workout with those, those, those movements. Right. And, and that by itself, plus 
a calorie surplus is going to be important too, Heather. Yeah, you're not going to build your butt in a, yep. in a deficit. Yeah. Uh -uh. So if, right. So as you, yep. so that's a big key, right? So get yourself in a, a nice. And I know you just said you're coming off a cut, so this is perfect timing. You go right into a small calorie surplus. Follow performance. Whatever leg exercises in there, instead of doing that, you start to work out with those th and, one of those three. And Heather, uh, your technique and feel is more important than the weight that you're lifting when it comes to a lagging body sure. part, because you okay, you, yeah. So when you're doing your your it's your, about the recruitment, yeah. When you're doing your lower body exercises, let's say you're doing a barbell squat, right? You could theoretically be doing a barbell squat, and a lot of the emphasis is going to your quads. You just don't maybe you don't necessarily notice it, except for the fact that maybe your glutes aren't aren't keeping up with your quad development. So I would back off on the weight. And when you're doing the squat, really try to feel it in the glutes and do this with every exercise that involves glutes. Go lighter and try to connect and feel the glutes because you may have to change your recruitment pattern a little bit because mm -hmm. everybody develops a recruitment pattern and sometimes it favors muscles that you may not necessarily want to develop more and you want to place the focus somewhere else. In order to do that, oftentimes you have to reduce the weight yeah. and really focus on the technique. Here's where like squeezing <clears throat> with intensity actually makes a difference. And that's something like it's a signal to your brain that, you know, this is this is uh, part of, of, you know, enhancing and adding more. Uh, muscle fibers into the movement to to really like uh, command that, and so to to be able, to, especially at um, you know these these peak parts of of let's say the hip thrust where you're really squeezing those glutes at the top, like hold and emphasize that, and really squeeze uh, with 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 tension there, uh, it, with a little bit lighter weight. A great way to do this before you do those movements. So okay, each day we're just gonna say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so easy. So Monday you got the squats. Wednesday, you got the hip thrust. Friday, you've got the, the deadlifts. Before you do those, those movements, get on the floor and do a floor bridge. Do two sets <coughs> of 10, 10 to 15 reps of just floor bridges where you're squeezing your butt <coughs> at the top of, of the, the bridge. Just so you can start to feel them. And that all you all we're really doing is getting neurologically connected to the butt really well. And then do your do those exercises, then do the squats or then do the hip thrust. That will help you get better connected before you go into those movements. That simply doing that with your surplus, we're gonna get we're gonna get gains on your butt. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because I don't need a whole lot of gains because I like I said I I was a little chunkier on the bottom half of my body. So I, I never worked it very much. So now it's sagging and I want to make sure it, it can lift. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nope, that's nope. yeah. what we're telling yeah. you. We'll do it for sure. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. I will start doing that. Um, my second question was, um, you know, I, I tend to get sore after some periods of, of working out. So like right now I'm finishing up symmetry and I'm not to the point where I'm so sore that I can't work out, you know, a, a, a day or two later, but I'm, I'm continuously sore all the time. And I'm not sure why, if I'm, if I'm pushing too hard, am I, you know, not getting the right type of calories or what, what causes that? I, I it's not like doms where I'm super sore and yeah. I can't move. Um, you're typically, typically that means you're doing too much or going too hard. Um, what is your protein intake look like right now? Wow. Is that current right now? I'm at, I'm at 150 to 160. Okay. So I wouldn't, it's, I don't think it's diet. Um, I would say you're probably doing too much and going too hard. So take our programs and cut the just total volume, cut it down by a third, start there and see if you feel better. If you're continuously sore, that's a sign that typically it's a sign you're doing too much. Uh, one, one other way <clears throat> that might just could be from the intensity. Are you training to failure or are you good about not training to failure? No, I'm good about not training to okay. failure. Okay, yeah. good. Cut the By the way, I just Doug just pulled up your picture. You're doing phenomenal. You're oh, yeah, you're, doing, yeah, you're, doing, you're yeah. doing phenomenal. Great so, job. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank I, you. I also think it will help. I mean, she's coming out of a deficit right now. Going into a surplus, we, we should feel we should feel better. You should recover better. Yeah. Yeah, here's what happens. Yeah. Okay. I, Keep this in mind. When you go into a surplus, initially you feel like, oh wow, I can I can handle more. And you get stronger. When you add weight, you're adding volume. So it's not a blank check to do more, okay? So typically what happens, and you, a lot of people experience this, they'll go into surplus. They're like, yes, I'm recovering good now. I can push more. And then all of a sudden, five, six weeks well, later, like, reps. I'm a I'm, oh, why am I overtrained again? Well, you're, you're lifting more. So your volume has now gone up. Now you're matching the, the, the you know, your intake. So just overall, I think you should cut total volume of any of our programs down by about a third. Just so you know, too, Heather, this is a, uh 
this is a forever moving target. And even with all the years and experience that we have <clears throat> are always still trying to figure this out. Yep. Like I, and, and the way I kind of, the, the, the internal conversation I have with myself is when I, when I feel that sore afterwards and you're like, damn, I, I just did a little too much. I'm going back in my head. I'm going, okay, like where, first of all, how, where am I most sore? Or where do mm -hmm. I feel a little over sore? And I can always tie it back to like, oh, it was when I did that, that extra set of squats, or that's, that's when I decided to add right. 10 more pounds to the bar when I probably should have just stayed at the weight. And I'm just making mental notes of that because I know I'm going to be in, you know, three or four more days, I'm going to be doing that movement again. And then next time when I go to do that movement, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to choose to not do that extra weight, or I'm not going to choose to do that extra set or whatever. I'm going to just stay where it was, or maybe even like Sal saying, I'm going to do <clears> one less set and then see how I feel and see if I still feel a yeah. little sore, but not as sore. So you're always kind of playing with that a little and bit. And this may or may not be the case, but uh, with symmetry, there may be movements in there you're very unfamiliar with. Your body uh, hasn't quite figured out how to respond and, and stabilize. Like, And so in terms of, um, you know, you're going to get more efficient at these movements and which will cause a little less uh, soreness and, and stress. But initially that may be a factor as well. And then last one <laughs> that we didn't say is uh, sleep. So uh, d that will also make a difference on like, you know, if you're getting really good night's rest, like you, you're going to have better recovery. Uh, if you're not getting the greatest night of rest the, the, for the last night or two, that can make a difference too. So all those variables, obviously, but it is always a moving target and none of us have that mastered either. Just so you know, you're doing a good job. Well, you guys probably still get sore too, eventually, you know, once in a while, right? I yeah, mean, it's, sure. Absolutely. it's not an uncommon. Yeah, no, no. No. But, I, but I know absolutely. if I, you know, I know if I'm sore often, I just got to scale down. Yeah, if it's consistently sore, I need to really make an adjustment. And typically what happens... You'll do a new workout, get a, back into yeah, it. Yeah, it's a new exercise yeah. that I hadn't done in a long, long while, or <clears> I <throat> decided to add more weight to the bar, and I kind of knew it when I was doing it. I'm like, ah, I'm probably pretty good. Nah, I want to do more. I feel good. I add more, then I'm like, ah, shit, I'm too sore. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's kind of like that for... Yeah. And it's usually about like the first two weeks of, you know, cause your programs are split up mostly by three weeks or so. So it's usually about the first week and a half to two weeks, I'm continuously sore. And then by the time that I get to the third group week and I'm increasing my weight and I'm, you know, building up, then I'm fine. Well, then I go into the next phase and I'm like, ah, crap, I'm sore again. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, here's the other thing too, Heather, if yeah. you're getting stronger, you're doing good. You're doing exactly. good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can tell by her picture. She's doing great. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're doing good. That's why I don't want to like overcorrect you too right. much. I, it, yeah. You seem to be doing really well. And a lot of the things that we're talking about are really fine tuning, mm -hmm. fine tuning that, right. Getting even Just better. Little about, adjustments. Yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll do better. But I, I'm also really curious that once you go into a surplus, uh, you might right away start to feel a little bit better too. Like the, having an additional calories for me it makes a big difference when I'm low, low calorie uh, and cutting uh, oh, a I, huge difference. Yeah. I tend to feel a lot more sore. As soon as I get myself in a surplus, I notice a big difference in my recovery. Yeah. Cause I, I did a, I did go back into a reverse, my first ever reverse. I didn't know anything about it um, in October after I initially lost that 30 pounds and I did feel pretty good because I, I did bump the calories yeah. all the way up to about 2,300 or so. So yeah. that yep. was good. Awesome. Could, yep. Could very well be that. Yeah. All right, Heather. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Right, have a good one. She had beautiful did she, hair. Did she say how old she was? No. She didn't. She, no, she was no. great. great shape. Yeah. I love her. Her hair was gorgeous. Gr great shape, yeah. dude. Good question. Uh, it's it's important for people to hear that, you know, especially about the soreness. Uh, we talk a lot about bringing up lagging body parts, but, you know, the whole soreness conversation, uh, There's the misconception is still, well, if I got sore, that means I did, I, I was good. <laughs> yeah. I, I worked out well. And if I don't get sore, it means a workout was ineffective. No, it's often the opposite. Often soreness, con continual soreness means you're doing the wrong kind of workout. It's a sign of overtraining. And, and typically when I'm like hitting the perfect workout, I don't get sore at all. Yeah. You know, and that's how it was with my clients. When I figured this out, it's like my clients really got sore. Our next caller is Dave from Massachusetts. Hey, what's up, man? How can we help you? What's going on, guys? First, I want to, obviously, like everyone, I want to thank you guys. I just found your podcast in July and uh, it's been a big help for me. I might not follow every advice you guys give, <laughs> but but it's uh, very entertaining. I enjoy it. And I uh, just want to say real quick, too, to Adam. Hey, how about those Warriors, huh, bro? Oh, you did. In this call, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this, this guy. How about those Warriors? They're getting uh, a little old, don't you think? Uh, bro, I'm still, don't get me started right now. I'm still sore about that right he's gonna now. Give you, yeah. He's going to give you the well, wrong I'm advice now. My, I'm still sore from my finals loss against the Celtics a couple of years ago. So, uh, so that's why I'm getting at you. Ah, uh, that's, yeah. well, you guys are having a hell of a year this year, man. I tell you what. I, yeah, I we'll I, see if, we, yeah, we'll see if Tatum can, uh, you know. 
be clutch this year. We'll if see, he does, it, it's going to be a massive letdown because you guys pounded everybody all year long. So if you guys, don't, yeah, well, that's what I'm. Do- that's what I'm kind of worried about. <laughs> so you know how that goes. But well, we'll you guys are ready to talk. I'm, I'm and, uh, also, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be. I'll be. I'll be back when you're ready to talk fitness. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. One last thing. Definitely peanut butter before jelly. That's all I got to say. I'm oh sorry. God, Jesus. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, sounds good to answer this. Wow, question. he's coming at you. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll help him out. <laughs> What's going on, man? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. All right, so I'm 47 year old husband and father um, of two teenagers. I don't know if you guys can help me out with the teenager thing either, but either way, but I, uh, I, I, you know, I've always had a weight issue in my life. You know, I was born, you know, I was a 12 pound plus baby, but struggled with my weight all my life. Uh, played sports and still stuff. I was very active, but still always had a struggle with my my weight. Well, it got to the point where in 2018 I ballooned up to 505 pounds. Whoa, uh, six feet tall. Yeah, but since then. I made a commitment to go on a, you know, my weight loss journey. And, uh, and since then I'm now 292. Wow. Um, Good job, man. Good for you. So I appreciate it. And so, you know, but now I, in this past summer, July, uh, July, 2023, I, I've always had a taste to do some strength training and I want to, you know, put my hand at that. So, and I did, uh, started going three days a week, then eventually turned it to five days a week. I was doing, my training is very generic also. It's very um, online, bro split, chest, tries, you know it. Um, so I've been kind of doing that. Now I'm down to four days because I'm starting to get a lot of uh, some – I had rotated cuff surgery uh, a year or two ago, and I have issues with it. a lot of mobility in my shoulders. I have frozen shoulder on the other side. Um, now I got tendonitis on my left elbow. had already a cortisone shot there. I actually see the orthopedic tomorrow. Uh, and now I'm also getting inner forearm pain um to my elbow mostly from doing bicep exercises and i don't know if my form's all wrong i don't know um i don't want to stop it's very therapeutic for me i love going i hate when i miss a day um so i'm kind of in that thing and then another one another thing too with compound exercises like uh, squat i have lower back issues my like i said my mobile my mobility is horrible so you get in the bar to where it needs to be the position is just atrocious i can't do it so I try and try and I just kind of do it. I, uh, what actually triggered the tendonitis was I was deadlifting and it was like three over 300 pounds. And I, that's when it first started. And ever since then I have, I've had issues. So I've stayed away from deadlift. Now I don't squat. I do do benching. I, I'll, um, I do bent over rows, those kind of things, but it's very generic. I just need help. I really don't want to stop guys. I listen to you guys all the time. I have people have seen me giving me compliments seeing differences, seeing in my shoulders, my body, just in, in general, especially people I haven't seen. So it's definitely what I've done has worked. And I, it, look, real quick, so like I said, I started in July. In July, I think I was like 328 or something, and today I'm 292. So even this period of six or so months that I've been training uh, probably has helped me lose some of that weight. But at, but at the end of the day, I just want to be fit, active, some lean muscle, um, um uh, be more mobile, mobile like i said a lot of my training is generic so yeah, yeah we got you covered you're, <clears throat> you're, you're over training yep. it's uh, very very easy for me to answer this yep. mass performance yeah, too. You, you have yep. you have uh all the classic signs of somebody that's over training so when you have repeated like you know this starts to hurt and then this starts to hurt and then this starts to hurt uh you're, you're over training right. and injuries start to to pop up we got to scale way back on the volume of your workouts and you'll get better results. And I'm going to tell you something that might shock you, but the weight that you've yeah. lost since July is in spite of the fact that you've been overtraining. So yeah. you, you actually would have done a lot better had you trained uh, more appropriately. You'd feel a lot better and you'd have more muscle and you'd probably be, yeah. be in, in a better position. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a program that I think is going to be perfect for you. And you can replace the exercises in there that you can't do. Um, you know, barbell squat, you could do a, a leg press or, or a lunge or, yeah, Bulgar- uh, Bulgarian, or a Bulgarian. Just, yeah. If there's a deadlift in there, you don't want to yeah. do it. You could try something else. Although I would suggest you do the deadlift, just go way lighter and focus on technique and form. But I think maps 15 would be the perfect program for you do the barbell version. And then what I want you to do is, uh, other times you feel like doing more stuff. I want you to just do mobility work. Just work on mobility to keep your body moving healthy. And here's, what's going to happen by following a program like this. You're going to feel good. You're going to feel really good. Your body's not going to hurt anymore. You're going to see better progress because what you're what you're listing is classic, very classic signs of just 
of just overtraining. So if you're going to go that route, I was going to go performance with him. Uh, if you're going to go that route, then I also want to give him uh, Prime Pro. That's right. That's right. So I would. Do, so if you're going to, I don't. I don't disagree with Sal's direction, but you definitely need a. You need some stuff for all the mobility shit you got going mm -hmm. on, and we can totally address this. So I'm going to give you the Prime Pro to complement the Maps 15 that Sal's saying. And, in, and in then prime, I, yeah. And then what I want you to do is every day before you do Maps 15, you're going to go through the shoulder. Shoulder, uh, yep. shoulder, shoulder, wrist, yeah. hips. Yeah, you're gonna go any anywhere where you've got stuff <coughs> that's bothered you. You know, so the, the yeah. wrist, shoulder area, scapula area, so and uh, hips for your low back. There's there's mobility drills in there, and I want you just to do two two or three of them. That's it. Don't overcomplicate. Don't do all of them. Don't do, just pick two or three movements for you know and total. So one for the shoulders. One for the wrist, one for the hips, right? Let's just actually just do three. And this is be and, and this is before doing the program. This is, so, that's right. Yeah. That's right. This is just mobility stuff. You're gonna do that before you go into your lifts, and then you're gonna do your lifts. And then if you uh, have any more free time or want to come another day or do, you just do mobility. So if there's any desire to do more stuff, do more, mo just do more mobility because yeah. that's going to that's gonna benefit you the most. The the weightlifting portion is perfect. What Sal is having you do. Just do that. That's fine. Yeah, and then if you want, in terms of just being active, uh, you know, do you do you walk on a daily basis? I do. I have a dog, so basically, when I get home from the gym, I'll take a two, three mile walk with my dog. <laughs> oh, you're good. That's yeah, my good. cardio right now. So I, I love that. You're good. I love that. Stay you'll get you'll that. get better results. Listen, because here's what's going to feel like. Because Maps 15, you're in the gym for the, the workout itself, so not including the mobility. Right, the workout itself will take you about 25 minutes. So you're going to feel like, oh, I'm not doing enough. Now, you're in the gym six days a week. Okay? Right. But you're going to be like, I, I used to come in here four days a week for an hour and a half or whatever. It's going to feel like you're doing a lot less. Don't worry about that. It's it's more appropriate. So it's going to build more strength, more muscle. It's going to reduce your risk of injury. And then your body's going to respond better. The fat loss will happen more effectively. The muscle building will happen more effectively. It's going to feel a lot better. Right now, what you're doing, these are very classic sign of overtraining is where you start to see these kind of repeated Bing, 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 you know, type of energy thing. It just means you're just doing too much. I, I want to add one more <clears throat> also, Dave. Yeah. I want you to watch. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a webinar I did, primeprowebinar.com. It's a free webinar to watch. Okay. And it's and, and the reason why I want you to watch this and go through it uh, at least one time is the intent of the mobility is so important also. So you you can hear me coach you on the video through like how I want you to do the mobility. So once right. you, so go through that right away as soon as you can you got time you got 30 40 minutes watch that video go you can do it in your living room put it on the TV or your phone and literally follow along with me so you get the intent of how I want you to do your mobility moves and then do like I said right before your workout you're going to you're going to pick three of those exercises and you're going to do them every time before you work out and anything else in additional that is either walking or mobility so as far as weight, okay. weight training, follow that mass 15 <clears throat> and then anything additional walking or mobility, you can do more of. Now, is there, should I be concerned? Obviously, like I said, I had a cortisone shot already, a cortisone shot already in my elbow. Uh, the pain's gone back. I see my other video tomorrow. Is there a, a chance of just not, he, he suggested physical therapy. I didn't do it. Uh, he says, but he said, you're good to train. Don't worry about it. Everything looks good. He did an x-ray on it. We're good. So what are you guys' opinion on that? Is it something that's going to – should I get another cortisone shot, say, for tomorrow? Deal with it at that – what's your opinion here, on that, the, really? There, there's some value in, in cortisone shots, but here's the, here's where people mess up. It takes away the pain, and so they keep doing what would cause it in the first place. And because cortisone, right. cortisone so acutely reduces inflammation, it also reduces the healing process. So what you see with repeated cortisone injections – is an accelerated degeneration of joints and ligaments and tendons. So, and that's that'll happen because the inflammatory process is also a signaling process for healing. So the pain is gone, the problem isn't gone. The problem is still overtraining, maybe bad technique, I don't know. So do not think, oh, I'm okay, go back to what I was doing before because it'll come back again and then you'll end up in a worse position uh, the, than you did the first the, time. The reason why I don't like cortisone is for that right there with Sal said. I mean, there's multiple reasons, but the main <coughs> reason is because then my clients think they're healed and they're better and they're, 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 they weren't doing anything wrong. Now, we got here because of poor movement. We need to fix that. And so if you go do the shot, then, right. I, then it's so important. So- 
and this is where people what people do they, they feel better so they're like ah i don't i don't want to do that boring mobility stuff i just want to get to the lifts yeah. and they neglect the mobility stuff and then what will eventually happen is you'll be in that pain again and then you'll have to get another shot so if you get the shot you still got to put the work in on the mobility as if you were in pain so some of my clients that i knew their behavior so i would tell them i'm not no you can't have the shot because i mm. want you to feel the pain until i can get rid of it organically and, and that signal of you still, it's still bothering you yeah. would be a reminder. I got to do my mobility. I got to do my mobility. And so if you have the discipline to, I'm going to get this shock and it's going to make me feel better to still do the work. I'm okay with that. Otherwise, sometimes I'll tell clients don't get the cortisone shock because that, that signal of pain is reminding you that I need to improve. It's this also movement. giving us the, the borders of where we go and where we don't go. Right. Yeah, because you're not going to get that signal. And I mean, ideally, you'd use it as an opportunity if you had restriction to be able to kind of uh, be able to build and establish a better recruitment Correct. pattern around yep. that. So you would try technique is is of the utmost importance uh, when when you have something like that that's, that's dampening the spot. That's why I right, want and that's to what I've been and that's what I've been worried about. I feel like yeah. you know I've no I've never been trained. This has all yeah. been my own will of learning and doing. And uh, so sometimes I'm like, oh, these pains. I know you guys are saying overtraining, which I believe that to be true, especially when I was doing it five days, six days. Yeah. Um, but now I feel like it's a technique, or is it just overtraining, or is it both? So just we're gonna, those, we're those gonna videos will help a thing. lot. We're, we're, we're going to get them in with our uh, Prime Pro videos. We're going to get we're going to get through this. Maps fifteen, we're giving to you. Prime Pro, we're giving to you. We're gonna we're gonna also have make sure you watch the Prime Pro webinar, and then I'm also going to have Doug put you in the forum so you can contact us. So. We're yeah, going to, we're going to solve all of this. Cause you're, I love a client like you because everything you've listed, like I have all, we have all the answers for you. And I know we can fix everything you got going on and keep you progressing. And you've already done a great job to getting you this far. And I know we know the answer. Like it's yeah. now it's just a matter of like making sure we stay on it. And then if you need it, so use the forum. Okay. To our forum, people love to post videos of their movements. Like if you want us to critique your squat or your deadlift or an exercise you're doing and you're like, hey, am I doing this right? Take a video of you doing the movement and then one of us or one of our trainers will get on there and help help you with the movement. If you have any feedback for us, like you're feeling nagging pain, you, got, you have a question, use that forum to help let us help you guide you through this process. Now, now Dave, if you still have that <clears throat> that prescription for physical therapy, I would use it. I like cortisone shots with physical therapy. I think that's great. That's what Justin was talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you still have access to the physical therapist, that's better than anything we can show you uh, on the internet, you know, for whatever, it, like having an actual therapist there moving you through correctional exercise is, is worth its weight in gold. So I would take that if you still have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, one more thing, if you guys don't mind. So my nutrition, um, obviously I don't, I don't keep calm. I don't do macros. I, I try to have, I try to reach 200 grams of protein a day. I don't know how important that is for me at this point, uh, for me to be in that protein number or, or look at my macros. What do you guys suggest on the nutrition you're, you're on point. right yeah, now? That's, that's the most important thing. Just yeah. that. Hit 200 grams. Is that your goal body weight? Would that be your, your ideal body weight? No, it's actually 220, but I find it, I fast. I don't like working out. I work out in the morning. I don't like eating before I work out. So that's been a problem to get those protein intake yeah. because I, I don't eat past dinner or I have a protein, like a casein protein at night at like eight o'clock or something. And then I won't eat again until my first thing will be after the workout, which is usually like 10 30 in the morning. I'll have like a, a protein shake with a banana. <laughs> that's be like my first thing. So I, that's kind of where I'm at with that. I fast. So I don't know if that's a, probably a good idea either. Uh, I mean, it's okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't say there's anything necessarily wrong with it, but 200 grams of protein is good. I, I don't like fasting if it's keeping you from hitting 200 grams of protein. And I do want to say this. It is important. Okay. Because it is going, you hitting your protein while we are strength training and lifting weights is going to, and if you don't, we might not build any muscle. You might keep burning calories and losing weight on the scale, but the lifting weights in with hitting your protein take is going to build muscle, which is going to speed your metabolism up, which is going to give you better results. And under hitting that while, this is also probably what resulted in the overtraining. So if you're doing all the volume of training you're doing and you were missing protein intake and you weren't hitting that consistently, that's only going to, it's only going to exacerbate the problem. Yeah. Do you think you could eat, uh, get it from whole foods or do you, or is a shake just really the only way you can get it down? I, it's just convenient, you know? So like that protein shake right after I'll bring it with me to the gym, bring a banana, you know, like boom, there it is. And then at night I feel like casein protein, you know, what I read is a good slow digesting protein to have through the night. 
So maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. I don't know. I'm just doing the best I, of my ability or what no, I think I mean, is the right thing to do for myself. You're, you're not doing anything wrong, but try to hit those protein targets. If you could do it from Whole Foods, that's the best way to do it. That's the goal. And then the whole message about casing at night, slow digesting, that's just marketing. <laughs> if you like it, that's fine. There's nothing wrong well, with casing protein. Yeah. It's, it's fine. And it, and, it, and I like the idea of protein. The, how I like to use protein with clients is the goal. Like my goal is, hey, let's try and get a, through Whole Foods throughout the day. But then at the end of the day, if I still haven't done it, then I have. I want my client to have a shake to get their protein and take up. So, so it's not that it's bad. It's not that it's like I'm totally fine with it. But the goal should always be I'm trying to <clears throat> to learn how to get to the place where I can actually get 200 grams of protein through whole foods. You're going to reap the most benefits by doing that. And the days that you can't, then you use shakes. That's totally fine. All right. Well, you guys are pretty much answered my questions. I mean, I like I said, I listen to your show all the time. I enjoy you guys very much, <laughs> and I uh, appreciate that uh, you guys take this time with me. And uh, and I appreciate the programs. Like I said, uh, most of the time it's been very generic programming. I find do my own, and uh, I feel like the overtraining was definitely a cause of a lot of my issues. Um, so it's going to be hard for me not to probably do more, but. But I'm sure if, as long as it helps my pain and uh, I feel better and if I see the results for sure, I'll always obviously keep doing it. Awesome. And um, and yeah, so and then uh, that's it. And then uh, all I got to say is go Celtics. <laughs> that's, why, <laughs> Dave, that's why I want you in the forum though, okay? The reason why I'm giving you the forum for free also is so you stay in touch with us. So that he can he can razz you when the Warriors kick ass. Yeah, it's right. No, that we're done. We're <laughs> oh, done. You're done. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah. Next time. That's no. not happening with the group of guys that they have right now. Yes, yes. They all so, should be retired at this point. <laughs> oh, <so>. Jesus. <laughs> so I stay in touch with me, Dave. I want to hear from you at least every every couple weeks or so. Check in with me and let me know how your how your progress is going or, or lack of so we can make sure we guide you through this. Listen, I thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And I'll do it. definitely what you recommend. I appreciate the programs. I'll probably should help me a lot, I would imagine. So I like I said, thank you so much. You got it, man. All right, All right, man. All right Dave. All right, thanks, guys. You yep. got it. <clears throat> the, the, I had, uh, I, ex I did the exact wrong thing when I, ha I had one cortisone shot uh, my entire life. It's when I had a small separation in my AC joint and I didn't want to stop training yeah. jujitsu. And the doctor's like, well, we give you a cortisone shot and then you go right back. And I'm a, as a trainer at this point and I knew what yeah, happened. Cool. I'm like, yeah, give me that shot. Yeah. Sure enough, I had to get surgery. If used properly, um, it can help. You, I mean, you you said it very well, Justin. If you can use cortisone to unlock movements or ranges of motion that then can be beneficial yeah. to correcting the, the the original problem, then that's how you use it. If it's just for pain relief, then and you can go do what you were doing before, then you've you've actually added fuel to the fire. Number one, you're doing what you did before more now because you don't have that natural barrier of pain. And two, right. the cortisone actually slows down or re reduces recovery because it's it's hammered down uh, inflammation. And this is why studies will show repeated cortisone shots lead to joint joint degeneration. It leads to things getting much worse with a lot of people because they just they don't do it the right way. That's why if depending on the client, like if it was I I and then I would by this time if he was with me for say months or whatever yeah. and this came up, it would depend on if uh, me who it is. Yeah, yeah, like if he if I knew that he's the type of person who will <clears throat> get it and feel better and be like, oh, I don't want to do those mobility moves. Those are lame. I feel good. I'm going to go right into my lifting all the yeah. time. I wouldn't let him have it because I'm like, I want the pain signal. Yeah. I want you to feel- you want those firm boundaries established. That's right. Yeah. Because then then it's this constant reminder of, I need to improve this. And then what, what he will notice or people that have issues like this, when you do the work right, when you put the mobility in, like you may not eliminate the pain right away, but you will actually feel relief more relief from doing the mobility drills almost instantaneously. And that's this like, and that is it shows you. Yes. So that's like a powerful like signal to people like, Oh wow, this does work. Cause I can feel a difference right away. And so a lot of times I'd want clients to like, you know, we're not going to do the shot cause I want you to feel it. And I want you to just feel the progression of putting the work in on what I'll do it. Or, you know, if I would be in a trainer, and I know like I would take it and then do my work, right? Like I know that like that yeah. I'm I'm doing something temporarily that's gonna free it's, me up. It's literally why pain exists in the body. It's it's to prevent you from doing something that would cause further damage. That's literally why the, the main reason why pain, physical pain exists from injury. It's your body showing you don't move in this direction, you're going to cause further damage. And then of course modern medicine's like, let's get rid of that side. <laughs> so let's yeah. just keep going. Yeah. Look, uh, if you like the show, you got to check out our peptide guide. It's a guide that teaches you about the most popular peptides for things like boosting growth hormone, helping with hunger signals, 
uh, helping you recover faster. It's a free guide. It's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpmedia, and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 